Okay, I think now is as good a time as any to get started. Um, welcome everyone, hello. Uh, today is a pretty special uh, special day and a special stream. Um, I don't think we've done anything like this in a, in a quite a while. Um, yeah, we decided to do a gameplay demo of sorts. Uh, we will be running through Skyblivian um, as it is right now. Um, and we're go. going to be um, we're going to be showcasing uh, some of the regions that you guys have seen in the development diary. Um, so yeah, I hope you're looking forward to that. Um, I'll quickly do an introduction. Uh, you may know me as Rebel Size. I am the project lead for Skeblivian, and I am also joined by two other leads, which are Shadow, who is our 3D lead, who specializes in creatures, um, and the Ludist, who may want to introduce himself. So, Ludist, go ahead. Yeah. Hey, guys. Um, I'm the implementation lead and uh, an exterior level designer. Skyblivian. I worked on the Fall Forest area from the um, from the Dev Diary, so you may know a little bit of my work. All right, great. Um, yeah, having that said, I think I think we can get started. Oh, actually, I just remember um, we had uh, just before the stream started because we're we're continuously uh, improving the game, right? It's it's always in development. Um, we had an update to the. Um, uh, what's it called? Gold Coast Grass? Yes, the Gold you Coast. You forgot, didn't you? I, I did forget, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I also forgot to remind you, so... Yeah, my bad. Your bad. All our bads. Um, yeah, we, we had some feedback from the developer diary um, that the, the grass in the Gold Coast wasn't gold enough, and we agree with you. Um, it's something we noticed ourselves as well. So that's something that we have now fixed. Um, see, that's why it helps when you guys, you know, leave your comments in the videos. Uh, we read them and we listen. So, um, yeah, having that said, it should be enabled now. Um, so I think we're just going to jump in the game. Um, I'll switch to the other screen and I'll see you there. All right, so far so good. Almost, almost flawless stream. We're very close. Let me pause the music. Yeah, um, Loot, I'm going to ask you to uh, keep an eye on the chat because I, I can't read anything except for Twitch, I'm afraid. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm in charge of YouTube. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, right on. I'm here I to hope help you guys... as well. <laughs> hey, D, good to see you, dude. Uh, yeah. Maybe you want to uh, do a little introduction as well. Uh, okay. Yeah. Hi, I'm D Keys, and I'm the uh, lead level designer on the project. Right, great. Um, first thing that I always love showing to people is the, the main menu, which uh, in my opinion already looks pretty kick-ass. It's pretty awesome, but uh, not what you guys are here to see, so let's just jump in instead. I have to admit, I, I had a character prepared for the stream. The, the, the stream itself is very um, impromptu, like it's, it's very last minute, but I did prepare a character, so at least there's that. Um, I see a first question about DLC, which might be a very good one to start off with. Um, so uh, I think I think we can all, all agree that in Elder Scrolls history, one of the best DLCs, hands down, was the uh, the Shivering Owls. Um, and I think a DLC that all of us at Skyblivia are very interested in 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 working on, um, but. Uh, the DLC itself, pretty big, and uh, Oblivion, the main game alone, also pretty big. Um, so really, f our, our focus at the moment is to release Sky Oblivion uh, as the base game. So none of the DLC, just the base game. Uh, and once the, the base game is out, that's when we will start uh, looking into the DLC as well. Um, it's, it's purely because... Um, I think I speak for everyone on the team. We want to get Skyblivian out as soon as possible. And as much as I love the Shivering Owls, and as fantastic as I think it is, um, simply put, if we don't work on it now, Skyblivian will be out sooner, and then afterwards we can, you know, get crazy with um, the uh, the DLC. 
Um, yeah, as I said, I prepared a little character for this stream. Uh, we are in the Imperial City Waterfront District, which is a kind of a, a lower class district, if you will. Um, I'm wearing the Elven Armor, which you guys saw in the uh, update trailer or the update uh, developer diary. You haven't seen the shield though, it's actually the first time I've seen the game as well. The Grey Aegis, you uh, can come across this in the... Um, what's it? The, the um, arena. Yeah, the arena questline. Um, also something you've probably not seen in the development diary is the new UI, which is uh, um, very much inspired by Oblivion and we try to make it look um, a lot more pleasant. Um, which I think we did a pretty good job at. But hey, that's me speaking, so... Let's go with the shield, yeah. Yeah, I the shields... Of, there are lots of questions coming through chat. Um, obviously, if someone's talking, we're not going to just interrupt mid-conversation to chat and switch questions, just so you guys know. We'll yeah. have to finish up the current question of the current topic before. So, you can post your questions again if we don't get answered, right? Exactly. Um... Why do we need Oblivion for the mod? Um, because the converter will take your parts of your Oblivion files and like your voice lines and stuff because we're not able to distribute them because they're copyright um, protected and whatever. Um, so we can't distribute the files so that we're going to rip out. The installer will rip out the voice files from your Oblivion install so that the game can use them. And there's no ENB, no. Um, this is all just the weathers from the engine. Yeah, that's actually a very, very common question I see. It's, um, one, uh, does Kablivian support EMB? And the answer is yes, because it's 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 a Skyrim mod, so, you know, you're still using Skyrim Engine, EMBs will work just fine. But the, the weathers, how, how bright, how colorful everything is, um, that's just really fantastic work from uh, our, our old lighting artist, Stade. Um, who did an absolutely incredible job with with the weathers? It looks it looks superb. Will spell making be implemented? Uh, we've actually gotten pretty far with that, haven't we? It's pretty much implemented. Yeah, it's it's well the the, the spell making itself is 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 done. Uh, it's not yet implemented, but it's it's kind of on our to do list because we still have to create some of the UI elements, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so until all the UI elements are in game, we're not merging either the the spell crafting or the rest of the UI. Uh, currently, it's a separate separate package, um, kind of. But yeah. um, good news is, is it will be. Yeah. In. yeah, we can't do it. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the spell crafting is hilarious. We we've we've uh, had Yeep who uh, who made the spell crafting show us a demo, <laughs> and it's it's uh, it's just as as fun as it was in Oblivion to make uh, to make your own spells. I've played it myself. It is a lot of fun. I think it does. It all works completely, and the UI is done. I think there's not much to do left. I think there were some keywords that'd be assigned to certain spells so that they couldn't be used in the spell crafting, like the, the right. like the test spells and stuff. Right, gotcha. And stuff like that. Um, something that might be interesting to talk about for a little bit uh, by me is the Imperial City Isle, which we're walking through right now. Um, as you can see, first of all, uh, one of the interesting things about doing a, uh, a gameplay demo uh, and a live Q&A is that there's, n there's no... Um, uh, there's no scripting. Um, for the developer diary, we try to make everything look great. Uh, we only show you the best of the best. Uh, but for instance, now you can see that there are some holes <laughs> in the in the landscape because that's areas that we're still working on. Um, it it's it you know it's a work in progress. Um, but uh, yeah, in any case, uh, something that's interesting about the the Imperial City and the Imperial City Isle that that it's it's located on is that in Oblivion, the area around the Imperial City, the island, was completely empty. Um, why? Time constraints, maybe. Uh, you know, we can make our educated guesses, but the fact of the matter is there wasn't too much uh, going on on this island. Since the Imperial City is the, the capital of the Imperials, what we decided to do is kind of transform it into uh, a bunch of smaller farms. So there's animals being kept, there's crops being grown over there, uh, further down there's uh, a fishery and uh, a wheat farm. We have mills uh, over there, we have farmhouses located on the island, um, which is something we try to do throughout the map of Cyrodiil. Um, Oblivion 
fantastic game. By far, favorite game of all time for me. But um, let's not pretend that it was perfect. Um, a lot of the, the world map felt a bit empty. Uh, and we're really trying to fill in that space with, um, well, whatever we feel fits uh, fits that area. So, you know, a hunter camp, uh, bandits that have taken over a, a fort, um, small little details like uh, a chest that's half buried, um, you name it. Uh, I think maybe Ludus and uh, D, you can probably talk about this a bit more uh, and in a bit more detail than I, since you guys are the uh, the landscapers for this project or one of the landscapers. Lud, uh, I'll go first, I guess. Then, yeah, um, in the full forest, especially at the moment, I've been adding lots of like minor locations. Um, the other day, well, for the day, a while ago, there's I added like um, a half buried like coffin with treasure in like the, the, the dead bandit with like some walls around like just bits of visual storytelling that Skyrim did a lot um you'd often come across little things like that in Skyrim right and Obliv that just doesn't exist in Oblivion they just weren't around at all so that's definitely something to add in it brings a lot more life to the world than a, a point to explore a point to go up the beaten track if you know you're never going to find anything from exploring and eventually you stop exploring you just fast travel around but if there's always something to find then yeah. Keep going, right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's probably one of the most important pillars when it comes to uh, level design and landscaping for us. It's that we we want to reward uh, exploration. We we want we want the people to you know who, who who go into the world and and look under every stone and behind every bush. We want to give those guys uh, something to find, um, and we want to encourage them to keep looking because uh, that's i think in the end that that's maybe the, the best compliment you can you can get is when someone finds that secret you know you've you've hidden so well and you thought maybe no one would find and then you see a screenshot maybe after release and someone says yeah dude i found it cool i like it <laughs> hopefully yeah um people yeah. Are asking about uh lag um i'm guessing that's not from the game i'm guessing that's through the stream right kyle yeah, my stream does, and I don't think I don't think that's in the game. The game runs pretty mm. smoothly. Mm. It runs like Skyrim, right? I'm watching. Yes. I'm watching both, and uh, I think the YouTube one is suffering a little bit from it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, my my game is running at a steady 60 FPS at the moment. Um, so. Yeah. Someone asked. I'm guessing you asked me if I'm from Cardiff. That's kind of it's a stranger. project question, but I'm from near Cardiff. Yeah. When he has to admit that he's lost the fight. Well, I fought. Funny, I've actually been doing something similar with um, what you were saying about the Imperial Isle, uh, with the Chain Hall area, which is just adding a lot more farmland around it. You know, just kind of building up that that sort of story that these cities, you know, produce food. It's not just it, every city sort of takes care of itself. You know. Do you guys think it's an idea to maybe start off with the uh, the Fall Forest? Since in the developer diary we, we didn't show off a lot of the uh, Imperial City. Um, so it might be good to just travel there straight away or should we go for a little walk? You can go for a picnic if we want in the Fall Forest. Yeah, picnic sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, this is probably something that a lot of people are uh, interested in as well. Like I always get questions about, oh, show the world map, show the world map. So maybe I'll show that really quickly. Here's the world map we have so far. I think the uh, the areas that need the biggest amount of work right now uh, would be the Great Forest, which is located here, which is being worked on by uh, Caro, who is one of our uh, new landscapers, who was a, or who still is, uh, an interior level designer. Um, the Nibbon area, which is over here, is currently get, getting a... Um, uh, what do you call it? Like a, a polishing pass? Yeah. And I, th I think that those are the two major... Yeah, yeah. Those are the two major areas with maybe Bruma needing some more work as well, right, Jack? Uh, yeah, the city of Bruma needs to be fixed up. There's actually a, a bug that's going on at the moment due to some we have to fix. And also some of the areas surrounding I want to do a, a sweep over. Uh, lots of people are asking about VR support. Um, uh, can't say for sure. I don't think we really have any. Does anyone have a VR headset on the team who can actually test? I don't know. Yeah, there is there is a few people, actually. But from what I know, um, 
Skyrim VR basically is the Skyrim SSE engine just with the VR stuff tacked on. So I think SSE mods normally work. Um, I'm not sure if we'll be doing any patches necessarily at launch, at least to support VR. Maybe that's something we could lock into later if there are issues with it. But at the moment, we are just focusing on an SSE launch. If it works naturally, then it works, but I can't yeah. say for sure. We have arrived in the uh, the fall forest. So this is uh, this is an area you guys have seen in the the new development diary, um, which is actually it's it's worked on by the Ludists. Uh, so maybe yeah. Lutz, you can you can talk a little bit about this area and uh, may, maybe also tell me where to go because you you know it better than anyone. <laughs> uh, I suppose um, if I follow the lake, just follow the path up and then go up to the road and go left. Um, this path up or go straight yeah, to yeah. the lake? Uh, I'm a bit behind you. So I don't really know. No worries. <laughs> the left, the lake is like northeast, northwest of here. Yeah. Would say. Um, yeah. So this area in oblivion, um, it's very small. Um, I think well, I'm going to talk in terms of cells. Probably you don't know how big they are. Um, I think a cell. Well, I don't know. I'll describe it. It's a very small area in oblivion. Um, just a little stretch of road, really going with no real major locations inside of it. There was one location inside of it, and then like one on the edge. But now we've expanded it and it's got like there's a few caves inside of it now it's about four times the size it used to be um replacing some of the generic forest with all the full forest now so it's like a full-fledged biome rather than just a, a speck of nothing really um we've also added in a few more different types of trees it was yellow i think it was just yellow and orange before and we added like these red yeah. ones that you'll see around as well and also stashes of green as the pine trees for like a bit of contrast also more um, bushes with colors as well. Yes. Yeah, I used lots of browns before. So yeah. it wasn't a very colorful fall forest. We've definitely upped the color from Oblivion. Yeah, for sure. Someone actually also uh, asks an interesting question uh, about falling leaves, if we're adding those into this fall forest, if we have any plans for that. There's an effect from Dragonborn um, we should be able to reuse. Um, I need to look into that, actually. So I will do that at some point. But um, you can add them in the weather, so there's constantly falling leaves everywhere, or you can add them as like an effect. So um, we were talking about adding them as effect so that we can control where they fall and maybe make certain areas a bit more cinematic, so there's not just leaves everywhere. But so certain parts look, there are falling leaves in certain areas, maybe we can do something to uh, think about what we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. It'd be pretty easy to, you know, change the textures on them a little to fit each tree that might be placed under. Yeah, I can hopefully I can just take the actual files from the leaves and use those. Who knows? Oh, it's the, like the, the constant is stuttering bad. is from the stream, it's not the game. Yeah, sorry everyone. Will it it's... cost money? Absolutely not. It'll be hundred percent free. As long yeah. as you have Oblivion and Skyrim Special Edition. And each of their uh, DLCs. Yes. <laughs> this is what uh, our imp screening looked like, by the way. Just placeholders. <laughs> yeah. You gotta throw oh, one. Actually, now that, I, uh, now that I whip out this weapon, uh, it might be an interesting one to talk about as well. We had someone join the project very recently, uh, last week, two weeks ago. Uh, he goes by the name of Heir of Septims, who is currently overhauling the unique weapons in our game. Um, one thing I think we're pretty proud of at Skyblivian is that we're making a lot of unique weapons. So we're making a lot of unique models, such as this shield uh, and the sword. But we now also have someone who can make very cool animated effects for them. So the sword I have in my hand right now, it's called Goldbrand. Um, and, uh, well, maybe I'll just show you what it does. So, yeah, uh, it's pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> I haven't actually played with it myself. This is the first time I'm using it. But, I mean, th this kind of stuff will make it so much more worth it for you to to go out and find those artifacts. Um, whereas in, in Oblivion and in, in Skyrim as well, to some extent, a lot of the unique weapons uh, use a generic model. And even though we are playing and living in a world that's, you know, very magical, uh, the, the magical effects are not always as interesting as I think they could or should have been. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. 
Um, and if you're wondering why I'm diving into the, the lake, uh, because we were talking about uh, landscaping before and level design um, and trying to reward players who are, um, you know, explorers who like to, um, you know, go out and, and find everything there's to find. So for, for those people, you may, for instance, come across something like this, like two little mud crabs having a picnic. It's, it's, not, it's not a, a sack of gold or uh, a really cool, unique weapon, but in and of itself, it's, it's, uh, it's a pretty cool reward, I think, anyway. Um, and this is the kind of thing that will encourage you, or at least would encourage me to explore more, go out there and see what there is. Yeah, because you, you, you'd be questioning as to how two mud crabs are having a picnic. Well, there, there's a little bit more to the story, so I suppose that's maybe left to when they get they get their hands on it yeah um loot is it the right way if i uh go to the west and then kind of try and find a way up towards the north where we had those atronax that we filmed in the dev diary or is that the other yeah. way yeah yeah that's north of you pretty much directly north of the of miranda which was the idiot ruin you went to Okay, and can I can I take the the road west and then take a right because there's a wooden bridge that crosses yeah. the uh... yeah you can go that way. Fantastic. Will level scaling work the same way as Oblivion? No, I think we're aiming more for Skyrim uh, difficulty, just because it it plays a lot better. Yeah, for higher yeah, level I'm, characters. And maybe Ludus can actually talk about leveled lists uh, yeah. in this section as well, because um, I think something we all remember from Oblivion is bandits at some point. Walking around with ebony weapons, which uh, they yeah, loot. Yeah. So yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, if you remember Oblivion, you you get to like level twenty, and all the bandits have the best gear in the game. It's very easy to find at that point. Um, we've changed that now, so bandits will only spawn, and generic NPCs will only spawn with generic quality gear. So iron, steel, leather, chainmail, and fur. So they can spawn with and then boss level enemies so like you go to the end of the dungeon you fight the boss that is the bandit which has the chance to spawn with a glass chest piece or an old ebony helmet or whatever so much more like with the way the way skyrim did it basically um will this work with skyrim together um i think it we've, we've might had people test it haven't we yeah yeah i think i think they support um, as long as they support playing mods, then it should work. Which I feel it does, so. Don't know too much about it, myself, so. I think it's going to be one of those questions that maybe, probably, we'll see. Time will tell. Yeah, it's yeah. stuff like that, um, Skyrim Together and Skyrim VR. It's not something uh, we are working on. It might be something we will look into after release, or someone will, someone else will beat us to it. <laughs> yeah, probably. Hopefully, I'm kind of counting on the modding community to uh, to do a lot of that work. I have uh, disabled the combat AI by the way in the game, so we don't get attacked by anyone or anything. So we can just walk through the world. Um, another reason that um, we featured one of our uh, departments, which is nav meshing, is because uh, in order for these NPCs to move, in order for this wolf to see me, the world needs to be nav meshed, which currently a lot of it is not. Um, so, you know, should you have any experience with um, creating nav mesh in Skyrim, you know, we would love to have you. Um, we're a pretty fun team, if I do say so myself. Uh, and, and yeah. Um, also, I accidentally, uh, maybe I went the wrong way. I'm not sure if I'm, I'm supposed you to go ahead. Uh, you don't need to head like east from here. You want to go over like the mountain peaks. All right. Well, I think since we're here, uh, Sanctuator, you know, we, we showcase Sanctuator in the new dev diary. It's probably one of our best fortresses in the game right now. Um, so it, it might not be a bad idea to just kind of show that off because you guys have only seen it from a few angles. Um, as you can see, the, the landscaping around this area is very rough. It's kind of in between two claims. So excuse any of the holes in the ground or the empty landscape. Uh, it's going to be patched up 
but the ruin itself is uh, is pretty much finished. Um, so yeah, it sh I think it might be interesting to take a little peek inside. Um, also, I'm not sure how many people are watching on YouTube, but I see 500 people on Twitch, which is... 3,400. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, there's a few. Um, I'm noticing repeat questions. If anything is a repeat question, I don't mind giving like a short answer to. So, the spellcrafting came up again. The spellcrafting will be in, yeah. And it's currently working. Would this include locations from Unique Landscapes mod? Um... Some of us, uh, well, I think a lot of the landscaping team love those mods, and I've actually taken some inspiration from some of those mods uh, for our own, you know, landscape remastering. So you'll probably see some influence from those mods in our own landscape. Um, now that we have so many people actually watching this on uh, on both YouTube and Twitch, it might be a good time to do a little uh, self-promotion because uh, the Skype Living Project is on social media. We are on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, on Instagram, Reddit, and we have a Discord server as well. All of that is linked in the description uh, of the YouTube stream. So if, you, if you're really interested in what we're doing, if you want to see the progress and not miss any of our updates, it would be good to give us a follow there. Uh, we'll be very much appreciated. Um, and also, we're, we're still looking for developers. If you are a 3D artist, um, if you have experience with the creation kit, if you know how to implement quests, these are all skills that we can uh, we can use. Maybe you're a texture artist. Um, yeah, we would love, we'd love to have you. Um, so by all means, sign up on our website, www.scapliving.com slash volunteer. Thank you very much. Questions about your own Easter eggs. Um... Yeah, I've added a good few Easter eggs um, already myself. So yeah, there's definitely new Easter eggs, plus the ones which were already in Oblivion. Um, I worked on a fort the other day. If any of you guys know the uh, fort cold corn Easter egg, you've got to follow the sword to the chest. Um, I was making sure that was still in the game as well the other day. So all the Oblivion's Easter eggs should be in. Um, can't see why they wouldn't, plus there'll be plenty of new ones. I've added Easter eggs that um, I I just can't remember anymore, so they're not Easter eggs to <laughs> me as well. <laughs> I think there's actually an Easter egg in this location, Cal. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I already forgot about that. Um, something uh, interesting about this location, and I hope you guys have been paying attention. Actually, you know what? Let's let's make this a quiz. Uh, what what is what is so significant about Sanctator? Why? Why is this such an important location? Not only in the in the Oblivion quest line because you go to this place to get something, uh, but also in in Elder Scrolls history because something really, really magnificent or not magnificent but important happened here. Um, so I'm curious to see if people have been paying attention to the developer diary because I the, the latest developer diary I wrote in such a way that it's kind of almost a novel. Uh, the narrator kind of talks you through a lot of the story and uh, I very specifically mentioned who has been here at some point and what happened. The Ninth Divine. Yeah, people, people have been paying attention. Good. Again, the uh, the skeletons are not attacking me because I have combat uh, disabled. Um, it's probably for the best anyway, because uh, you know I'm not that good. Should I go into the chapel, by the way, or should we? Uh... Yeah, you can show the Easter egg there, right? Yeah, because someone was at, was asking about an Easter egg earlier. Also, it's worth noting really quickly before I go inside this this location has been built out of loose pieces. I think if you were to count them, you guys, D and Luge, you've been working with the four assets. Like, how many, how many loose assets do you think were used to create all of this? Gonna, rough estimates. I'm gonna guess something around. I think up to maybe 400, maybe more. Because this place is big, um, and like sometimes I think I average <laughs> maybe 200 to 300 pieces for a fort. 
And this place is massive, so I think it might have hit like 500. I would love to find out. Yeah, so what's really cool about this place, this this chapel, uh, like like we said, it's it's built out of pieces. So it's it's not a pre-build uh, uh, set. It, it's been built out of loose pieces. Uh, the landscaper who's responsible for this, Clef J, has been on the project for a couple years. Absolutely fantastic landscaper. And I think it's safe to say that these kinds of forts are his strength. This is what he does best. Um, and he, he made this. This was his own idea. Uh, none of us knew he was doing this until he showed it was finished. And I think it blew everyone's minds. And we were talking about Easter eggs earlier. Um, and yeah, I think I think the people who have played certain games that are really difficult and I don't touch because I just get frustrated, something to do with souls, may have noticed a little Easter egg that was, uh, which was put down there. All right, cool. Um, loot that that yeah. area we were originally gonna visit. Wh which way is that? Um, Should I backtrack a little bit. Yeah, backtrack. Might be an nice. easier way to get to it, actually. If you go back down the road. The uh, the paved road. Paved road, yeah. All right. Also, this place has a custom weather, which is why it looks so spooky. And there's uh, uh thunder in the distance and. Why it feels oh. so magical see as some we people, walk away. I see some yep. people asking, a um, few people asking in the YouTube comments um, about other languages. Um, I think what, we're, what we'll be able to do is any language that Oblivion was uh, translated into, uh, dubbed into, um, I think we'll be able to just port those over the exact same way we did the other uh, voice lines. So yes. Hopefully, yeah. We'll, yeah. I'm not sure if subtitles will work quite right because all that is baked is all in is part of the actual ESM file so that might require translations for subtitles mm -hmm. I don't know but the voice line should definitely be in other languages yeah um also someone in chat when they asked about the Tankator question um someone which uh spiked the inner law nerd in me brought up that it was the the birthplace of Reem and Cyrodiil so I just kind of wanted to well, congratulations to them, oh. which some, not many people know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's proper, like, Deep Elder Scrolls lore. When he, talked as a, when he talked as a baby and said that he is Cyrodiil or something, something along those lines. I don't know. Also, this, this I, I have to highlight this. The, the, the armor I'm currently wearing is the Elven armor. Oh, my guy is really angry. Um, which was more, made by McCarthy. Uh, who's another 3D artist on the project, has been in for a while. Absolutely fantastic artist. Um, and the shield, the Grey Aegis, is made by Borks or Borgia. Um, another, honestly, fantastic artist. Uh, I have a lot of their equipment in my inventory. Uh, we're going to be flipping through them. But what I found really cool is that, coincidentally, these two match so well. Like, the, the, the gold lines and the uh, engraving are almost the exact same color as the armor set, which is... Completely coincidental, but um, it might even go with our steel set as well. You never know. Oh yeah, yeah, true. You know what? Let's let's give that a try because uh, that one's been implemented as well now. The the fine steel armor. Uh, I see some people asking with other graphics mods. Um, other graphics mods really aren't going to work, and I'm guessing you aren't really want to play with them either because lots of them are done in Skyrim style, right? You don't really want Skyrim style landscape textures. And they won't work out of the box anyway because of just how the game works. I won't go into it. Yeah, yeah. A, a good cool. thing to note is that um, Skyblivion. I mean, we are we are a modding project. We're we're fans of the series, and uh, a lot of us anyway are are very much <laughs> amateurs. Uh, but that doesn't mean we, we don't take this project seriously. Uh, it it it's it is a proper game in and of itself. We we have an art style. We have an art direction. Um, and we stick to that and as you can see it's it's completely different from Skyrim um, as much as I love Skyrim the uh, the colors are, are nowhere near as vibrant um, and it doesn't have to be because it's it's a different province so that's that's completely fine um, but if, if if you were gonna mix and match mods from the Nexus all willy-nilly without really giving it a second thought um, I can guarantee you you're, you're not gonna like the uh, the end result 
Um, what I hope, though, uh, what will happen is that the community, the, the modding community, um, will start picking up uh, making mods for Skyblivion. That honestly, that 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 would be fantastic. I really, really am looking forward to see what the community will do, what they will improve, what they will change. Because um, I think that's what's so cool about PC gaming, and about uh, you know this this fantastic modding community around Skyrim is that you can make these games your own. However you want to play a Skyrim, up to you, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm really, really keen to see how people will change our work in the future as well. Uh, it's stuttering because of the stream, by the way, guys. It's not the game stuttering. This isn't how the game runs. It's just the... I'm guessing something on the stream end, I don't know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so things like Reshade and EMB, they will work, but they will need their own, um, you know, presets made for... Sky Oblivion's weathers. So things, uh, graphics mods like weather mods that add weathers to Skyrim, you know, they'll work for Skyrim, but they won't be added to Cyrodiil. It's world space. Yeah. So those are the types of things that won't work. But, um, you know, if you want to try an EMB with this, you know, you don't have to get a completely new EMB. It's the same Skyrim Special Edition EMB you'd need. Other will work i hope i wasn't I, did, I was clear with that you will be able to download weather mods and stuff but they will be need, made for scape living specifically we will also use scape living armor weapons in skyrim um i'm guessing once we release that we could pro probably release more standalone mods so people can play with yeah scape living stuff we could always do four as well you are getting close to it by the way carl it's it's a little bit higher yeah. up, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You're just gonna pass that little fort thing for me. Yeah. I think my potato PC will be able to run run this. Um, we've actually been thinking about um maybe implementing a possibly like uh a lower graphics option, ESP. Yeah. That does you know uh less dense grass. Probably, Photometrics yeah. light, lighting off because that is a big chunk of performance. Yeah. Basically, I think we, we want as many people to be able to play this and experience this as possible. So we don't want to we don't want to cut anyone out. It's it's bad enough that we can't bring this to consoles. We would absolutely love to, but yeah, that's unfortunately limitations. Ooh, I see something in the distance. Well, Kajita and going to look at the original designs. Um, the moment we're currently using all Skyrim stuff, but we do actually have someone who's just joined the team very recently who is working on um, race textures and some small changes to the races. Um, recently, he was working on um, the orcs, and he's been tweaking like, the noses and stuff, so they have like the, the old pig-style nose from Oblivion again. Maybe small changes like that would make it to the races. We're not going to do a massive race overhaul, though. Deadlines oh, progress. Um, I actually kind of just finished up the first, uh, like, Oblivion Realm. So I have. I don't know if you have the latest ESP can. Nope, I do not. Oh yeah, we we said we would maybe do that, right? Show uh, the first Oblivion Realm. Well, we, we we can still do that if you if you send me the USP, I'll um. Maybe I know that. The, uh, this Sorry. isn't the uh, first Oblivion. This is the Burma Oblivion gift, but it's the first one that uh, we've completed. And uh, hopefully, you guys like it when you see it because it's, it's supposed to be the direction we're looking to take with them. We do plan on adding more. Uh, Oblivion Gates, just to kind of vary it up a little, because they were very repetitive, having eight realms spread out over a hundred possible gates, it's bound to get yeah. repetitive. Leveling, I've seen a few questions about, um, it's going to work the same way Skyrim does at the moment, we, ha we don't have any real plans to change that at the moment, but who knows what the future will hold really. Yeah. 
I think a problem with a lot of these ideas and, and ways to improve the game is that as much as we we want to make the best experience possible and, and many of us will agree with, you know, improving or making the, the, the leveling a bit more unique and interesting, um, we also have to make a choice between um, when, <laughs> simply put, when do you want Scoblivion to release? Because we can we can change virtually anything um with with the tools that we have for Skyrim uh there are very little things that we we cannot change but at the end of the day do you want Skyblivian sooner or later because all those changes are going to add up um and they they will keep us oh shit first crash um and they will keep us from releasing the game so um you know in order to to get this out ASAP um we uh we're kind of trying to, 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 to hyper-focus. You know, we have an MVP, our minimal viable product, and that's what we're trying to uh, trying to focus on, and that's what we're trying to get out to you guys. All right, no worries. I'm just restarting the game really quickly. Not a problem. I'll, I'll find you the uh, the world coordinates if you want. I got them for the where you were. Yep. Um, minus 631. It's... Spellcrafting is working, yeah. The the YouTube stream is a bit delayed, but someone um, someone just before you crashed asked, will it just work? <laughs> I no. guess it just won't. <laughs> uh, something that's that's uh, worth mentioning is actually the, the game itself is really stable. Um, I don't think I've had a crash in, in forever. The reason why the game is a bit crashy at the moment is because we had new LOD, uh, distant detail. Um, which is <laughs> too too high quality, uh, which is currently causing the game to to crash a bit. Um, so you know, keep that in mind. The, the game itself is running fine. Uh, it's running smooth, even though for some reason it doesn't really show that on YouTube. Um, but yeah, don't, don't try not to worry about it too much. Um, all right, what were the coordinates again? Minus six and thirty-one. If there is without this is footage without an EMB. There is no EMB enabled at the moment. This is just um, raw Skyblivian, as as yeah. basic as it gets. No changes whatsoever. DLCs will come out after release, and we don't know if it'll work with Skyrim VR. Possibly. I'm answering questions we've answered already. Shortly, sorry. I mean, we're we're going to be answering questions ten, three times maybe. <laughs> Is there cooperation Imagine. between you and the Skyland guys? Um, if there's if there's a certain assets that we uh, could use both, um, sometimes I would say we 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 probably coordinate with Beyond Skyrim Cyrodiil Sir a bit more since that's uh, we have a bit more in common. Uh, just due to the fact that Skywind, a lot like us, has their own um, sort of very specific art style for Skywind. Yeah. So, you know, us sharing or them sharing like a like a particular house model with us mightn't be the, quite the right architecture for us. But there are some things we, we do share in common. Um, someone asked how much of a pain is lip syncing. As far as I know, I don't, I'm not too much into NPCs and stuff. But Skyrim generates something called a lip file from the voice file it has and it generates and then it knows certain sounds and then it generates the lip movement for you. So you can in my do opinion, any lip -syncing. it it actually it looks and feels great for Skyblivian. Like I've I've played through a couple of the the quests that are in the game, uh, and I was I was really pleasantly surprised with how good the uh, the lip sync looked. Like it, I didn't have anything. I mean, it, sure, it can be better, but uh, in my opinion, it looked quite good. You think the mod will release in smaller increments, like Beyond Skyrim? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, just due to how. Um... Well, the way the game is structured, we just can't just split it up into chunks like that. I think the Beyond Skyrim guys, uh, like planned that very far in advance to be able to do that, which is why they were able to kind of, uh, have this, just that little small chunk of Bruma work separately. Yeah. This location Kyle's at with the Atronax is one of those examples of, um, minor locations or unmarked locations, or you never know what you're going to come across. Something I worked on, there's a bit of a story to piece together. You guys might be able to figure out on stream, I don't know. 
much else shown, but maybe something you'll be able to actually figure out properly once you're uh, in game yourselves. Also, someone asked for a close up, so that's why I'm uh, walking closer up into to the Atronach. Um, Another location where we should go to. Any suggestions, guys? Because uh, ideally, I think it would be cool if we go past every uh, fort, for instance, that was showcased in the Dev Diary. Um, not sure if you, Loot, want to show off anything else in this area. Um, uh, nothing really comes to mind at the moment. We've shown a lot right. of full forest now as well, so maybe we want something else. Yeah, we've been we'll some things we'll find, right? Yeah. Even life for an hour already. <laughs> Are we really? Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah. What do you guys think? Where should we go next? I see a lot of uh, requests for Black Marsh. Uh, romance and marriage options we're not doing because those void. So it'd be kind of cool to do to bring over, and I'm sure there'd be mods for it, but there's just no voice lines in the vanilla game which we can really repurpose to use and create. Yeah. Um, a really, from. really quickly, uh, what might be interesting is that Cyrodiil is one of the most diverse uh, games in the Elder Scrolls when it comes to the, the biomes that it has. So up here we have the Jarrow Mountains, which you know from Skyrim. Uh, we have the uh, Golovian Highlands, which is another mountain range, but it's it's a lot more you know dry and arid. We have the Gold Coast. We have the West Welds. The Heartland, which is situated around, well, the heart of Cyrodiil, around the Imperial City, very aptly named. We have uh, Blackwood, we have the Nibbon Basin and the Nibbon Valley, and we have the Valus Mountains, which are next to Morrowind, um, all of which we tried to give a very unique look and feel. Um, and I think you'll be able to appreciate that when you explore the, the game, uh, that the you know, the location you go to, as, as as you go through the map, it feels unique and it feels a bit more um, well, special, maybe for the lack of a better word. Someone suggested um, Vilvarin. Maybe you can show the entrance from the sewers at some point. Oh, yeah, yeah, right yeah. Now, but that could be a nice, nice shot for people who haven't seen it before. Yeah, maybe maybe after we go through Blackwood, since it's yeah. very uh, murky and, and it could probably spooky. start from the top, can't you? Uh, Could walk all the way down. I'm, I'm doing the opposite. I'm I'm, wa I'm starting from the bottom. Oh. I already traveled there. But that, that's okay, okay too, right? Well, mm. the bottom's just the top if you're upside down, so... <laughs> 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 all right. <laughs> that's where he brought you. Oh yeah, D, you might want to talk a bit about this location because um, it's an interesting one. Even though it, in you know, for the base game, it, it won't be anything other than just a really cool location. Still, yeah. might be worth talking about. Yeah. So in original Oblivion, um, this was bef if bef if you didn't have the uh, Vile Lair DLC, there was still a little island uh, that was off the coast of Blackwood with this. Either it was a demolished house or it was a, uh, a house that was undergoing construction and then abandoned. Uh, I don't think there was ever any sort of clear story to what it was supposed to, but uh, I basically took that to kind of mean that maybe that was a house that was built on top of the vile lair. And so I thought it'd be nice to add in add in evidence of that even for the people that don't have the Valair DLC so uh, I built this this burnt down house that perhaps belonged to the previous owner which I think is supposed to be a like an ancestor to the player but I I just continued building and I think it turned into like just like a small little settlement and as I was doing it, like a little story was starting to build in my head. Like, uh, it usually happens when you're designing levels. You know, you try to try to justify what is the reason why you're placing things down and why this place looks like this. And uh, I started just imagining this this village of peaceful vampires. These vampires who you know just want to live their life. They. Uh, they have the disease, they can't quite get rid of it, but they don't want to bring any sort of trouble to them. But uh, unfortunately, trouble still comes to them. 
Uh, this here is actually another little example of visual storytelling. You see a beehive here hanging, but you see some poor soul that tried to tried to grab it at the bottom. Oh no! Oh. He fell. <laughs> oh no! That's that's great. I hadn't seen that before. That's <laughs> super sad, though. That's all example of visual storytelling. But yeah, so um. That's uh, our that bears settlement. Great, though. That settlement Fuck. is uh, like a former vampire village that the citizens of Leowin uh, took it upon themselves to uh, take some pitchforks and torches to, as well as the uh, count at the time. There's a there will be another little um, attachment to that story that'll pop up in a quest later on. But I think that's that's all I'll see on that one. What's also maybe good to note is that maybe people haven't picked up on this yet, but this is Blackwood. This is the, the swamp of Cyrodiil, the marsh, um, which is, uh, well, it's not the most colorful area in the game, but I think it's one of the coolest because it's such a big contrast compared to the rest of the game. Um, I really love it. And we've actually arrived at, is it Fort Blue Blood, this one? It is. It is for Blue Blood, which was a big part of the Dev Diary. Um, I think it was the fort who uh, who was defeated by peace. One of them. I think there was quite a few forts that just weren't needed in Cyrodiil after a while. Someone but was yeah, asking I, for. Uh, oh, sorry. You can see. Uh, Forts in Blackwood particularly don't age very well. It's the moisture, the vines, it just rips them apart. I think Someone we're gonna... was asking for some bow combat, maybe? Got any cool bows? I'm not sure if you've got any character. The bow of Infernal Frost is pretty, pretty dope. Oh, I don't have that one. I do... I, 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 I can show you guys some weapons really quickly, sure. Uh, I have a couple of bows, none of the unique ones. I have the Ebony Bow, Fine Steel Bow, Iron bow, silver bow, and the steel bow. I guess the, the silver one is, is kind of unique. Yeah, so it's nice. Someone asked why you build a, a bridge a, a bridge through a tree. I think the idea is that the tree grew and destroyed yeah. the bridge, right? And these yeah, forts are very old. They're from like ages ago, they can be. So that's a, that's a tree that's just through time, just slowly, you know, broke its way through the bridge. Just kind of uh, showing how strong these trees can grow. This is the uh, one of the shots from the Dev Diary. Oh, look at that! Border gates we're asking for. Maybe you can visit the Black Marsh border gate while you're here. Yeah, I'm trying to actually get a bit of a brighter weather because it's hard for me to see. I can imagine it's hard for. Uh... There's a there's a fun little uh, parkour uh, section here for you. I think I found you. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Same separate launcher. I think the idea is we will have a separate launcher, yeah. Damn, dude. It's an elaborate parkour. Uh, eat. Weak potion of the spell. Original With artwork by Caro. And the potion bottle by Doik, right? Potion bottles by Andre. And oh. then implemented by Doig. Oh, implemented by Doig, my bad. And me and, me and Doig worked on the different cube maps, so the agree potion looks unique. Right. It's a massive collaborative effort, effort between like four or five people. So that every potion has a unique look, without us having to do a lot of work modeling them all. Mm -hmm. people, I think a lot of people are asking where the NPCs are. Um, I think there's a few of them. Currently, our uh, thing could be a bit empty. I'm not sure if the, the, the way it's set up here, um, I've noticed because there's, I think there's a total of three enemy markers in this zone, and n they don't always appear. Sometimes it's uh, two, sometimes it's three. Uh, so I'm not too sure what determines that. I think it might just be the player level. I think it's a random chance. It should have like a number after it. Mm hmm. Um, there's also uh, the addition of the lag of Navmesh, 
So there, there's animals, there's NPCs in the world. Uh, but because a lot of this is not navmas yet, they can't, they can't, um, sandbox, they can't walk around, they can't, you know, go on their patrols, uh, go and, and do their chores that their AI packages, uh, are telling them to do, because they can't find the door to leave their house, for instance. Um, it sounds silly, but that's, that's, that's kind of what's, <laughs> what is keeping them from, from going anywhere. Um, and that's also why we mentioned the nav meshing department in uh, our development diary because it really does help to get more uh, more people to work on that. We could ask about world encounters. That's something we could possibly add. At the moment, there's nothing we've started on. Our questing department currently is very busy implementing the base quests of the game. Yeah. Whenever they get done, that's probably something they would start looking into for some of the extra, extra additions. Yeah. Through the trees, we can uh, I think see Leowin right about now. It's an independent game or a really big mod. It's technically a really big mod. A really big independent mod. Yes. It creates the game. Yeah. Maybe, uh, D, you can you can start talking a bit about Leowin as we approach the city. You know, I'll go in through the uh, the front gate. Maybe go through the um, the settlements a bit before. Are you going through the poor district side or? Uh, whichever one, which whichever side this is. Uh, that would be the poor district you're going through, so you're not getting a good first impression of the beauty of that is Leowin. You'll be seeing the, uh, well, the disgusting rabble of the city, the, the, the filthy beast folk, the, you know, no upstanding Imperial would dare find themselves in that part of the city, so I, I'd, I'd recommend you stay clear of that side. We'll just run through it then, okay? All right, but um, bring a dagger. I, I got a I got a flamey sword. I don't think anyone's gonna mess with us. Thomas Morris asked about uh, what a PC you um you probably need a, a, a fairly substantial gaming PC. Um, we haven't got any hardware requirements yet. Um, to play the base Skyblivion, you should be fine running on uh the the whatever the Skyrim requirements are. But for the remaster. You're looking at uh, a PC that can run a heavily modded Skyrim, pretty much, because that's essentially what this is. What did you um, do, Kyle? Why did you unload the door? I don't know. I have, I have that bug with the door again. I'll just, I'll just spawn in like this. Yeah, we seem to have bugs with doors as well. Not quite sometimes sure we do, sometimes we don't. But yeah, so I, I designed Lewin. Um I think it took me a total of two days, nine hours, and 25 minutes. Uh, I streamed, I think, the vast majority of its development on on stream. And uh, yeah, it was really fun. Um, so Lewin in uh, what it was being originally designed in Oblivion, was supposed to be split into three sections that would allow you know, the ships to pass up the, the Nibbin. Uh, but I think just due to um, either time constraints or, uh, you know, console limitations at the time, they uh, they just couldn't do it. Uh, fortunately, we don't have that issue, so we were able to, you know, bring that realization to life. So I uh, I think I had, had one of our 2D people work up a concept a lot like the original concept for oblivion only just sort of detailing the uh which which district was in which part of the town and uh i noticed they they had speci specified the um the rich district was near where the shops were and the poor district was uh you know separated which i thought suited very well because the countess of this city is very um well she doesn't she doesn't like the beast folk very much or the uh, the common rabble. So uh, it made sense to make Leowin uh, this this beautiful city on one side and then this this forgotten oh. uh, city on another side. Uh, just showing, uh, you know, how each citizen class is treated. And I yeah, finally get a clear weather, so it's actually 
you can actually see what's going on. So sorry it took so long. Yeah, I, I well, I've, I've often wondered because we, we've struggled to find out what our weather codes are. Um, could it just be the Oblivion ones? <laughs> Don't say you, no. you, you don't want to don't you go up to those uh, toilet st stalls. Have you seen how fast they get slammed open? <laughs> <laughs> you had me there for a sec, dude. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, this is the poor district. This is the poor district, and I kind of wanted to make it look lived in. If you look up like that main street, you'll see. You know, it's just uh, well, it's littered. There's like. Tur chairs and tables that look like that they've been thrown out onto the street during you know arguments between spices um basically i i modeled it after my own childhood street more or less so <laughs> it wasn't very hard for me to draw from inspiration but yeah i liked uh and i i even like making their little back gardens in their city or in the behind the houses uh one of them even tells the story of the residents who live in there uh, and that's the uh these are the the canals so these are the spaces in between each district uh this is the the poor district canal um i i like to imagine you know this is where the the skooma traders come in and smuggle their goods in and out uh, they don't want to come in the this is probably where the more corrupt of lewin's guards would would be stationed. Maybe succumbing to, uh, well, the corruption. Oh, you missed the chest. Did? The uh, boat. In in the ruined boat? The broken one? Yep. Oh, there it is. See, I, I, I thought, oh, and it's Kuma. Oh, yeah. Probably one of those uh, skooma dealers who uh, couldn't keep it afloat. Well, no, they just didn't. They didn't want to pay the uh, the bribe. Ah, yeah, always pay your pay your bribes. Come on. Ooh, D. I see some clipping there. I, know. I hate I hate I hate to out you uh, like that live, but uh, there's a box coming out of the uh, the boat. Well, no, that, that's standard, you know, you can, if you want to let the fish go, you just open up from underneath and, you know, it's been Oh, out. okay. Right, all right. Bullshit mode activated. <laughs> <laughs> you would do good well, in PR. <laughs> Will there be underwater combat? Uh, yeah, uh, we're still working on it, though. Um, I think, I think we had it in kind of at some point, but we, we wanted to, you know, get it a bit more, I don't know, what the term would be stable or bit, feeling a bit more yeah. responsive. But yeah, now we're in the uh, cathedral district, which is the, uh, the, the very tranquil shield that uh, guards the rich from the poor, if it ever comes to it. Our, our stained glass windows are something to maybe highlight as well. They've been made by Shadow not too long ago. They look absolutely fantastic. Before people say the text is the wrong way around, uh, it's the wrong way around when you're outside, but on the inside, they're actually not mirrored. Um, so, sharp eye, but uh, yeah, we were kind of ahead of you there. Yeah, they are lovely looking. Yeah. yeah, yeah right we, um, we, re the reason we actually had to redo these windows was due to the fact that um, the cathedral model was actually made by the Beyond Skyrim uh, team. Yeah. And one of the stained glass windows, actually, since it sat in Skyrim's era, it wasn't allowed to feature Tiber Septum. So one of the uh, glass stained windows featured Martin Septum, which, you know, was a bit of a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, because he's still alive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it was kind of ridiculous because we we were developing the game and Sean Bean was still already dead. Yeah. <laughs> Let's be compatible with combat mods. Um, I imagine so. Um, I'm not one really tested as far as I know, but some mods will work, some won't. 
Um, I think the key thing will be go going in is not expect your favorite mod to work. It works as a bonus, but you've got to try to frame this as you're playing a new yeah. game. And maybe experience it the vanilla the way we intended is the best way for you to do it first. It's the way I experience Bethesda games. I always play non-modded first and then mod the hell out of it your second playthrough. Yeah, exactly. We uh, we just uh, visited the the castle, the castle of Skingrad. Paid a little visit to the Count and Countess. Uh, actually, let's let's go to the graveyard as well really quickly. I'm here now anyway, right? Is black and robe still a robe or is it light armor? I think it's gonna be a robe still. Yup. Yeah, I think it was whenever I was making this city, one of the things I wanted to kind of show was you know it's it's old so a lot of people have you know been born and died in this city so i i thought there was always maybe a little too few uh tombstones and gravestones in the in the cities well you know yeah that was someone's ship and you just ruined so yeah well tough luck not my problem people starving in that that section of the city you just went out of and you're just throwing apples in the in the river no, well, yeah this is this is the uh well the much nicer uh probably more legal side of the uh canals or the you know probably the the shops get their genuine goods from goods shipped into Oh, D, you forgot to remove a Jeremy. I always do. For anyone curious who this, um, you know, bald idiot is, uh, Jeremy is the skill test that we sometimes use. Because sometimes when you're building like a fort, a dungeon, you just you have to get reminded uh, as to, you know, how big the player is in comparison. So I usually plop down a Jeremy. Just to test it, and I often forget to take it out. In fact, I'm amazed you haven't come across at least six more. Here we are in the rich part of the city, uh, where the finest of people live. Um, you know, the the best of the best. Also, the most ignorant, I think. Yeah. Nice little clock tower. Oh, well, not clock tower, a bell tower. But I just had to add as a nice little centerpiece to that, uh, well, center. Something I uh, I noticed in the developer diary is that there were some comments about the uh, about the trees and how we removed the trees. <laughs> uh, the, the, the trees are, are relocated. It's not that, like, there's no trees in the uh, the upper district. It was just the angle that we were showing. Did, didn't have any of them. It was shot from there, so we were looking this way. Uh, but there's still trees over there. There, there, there's trees where it makes more sense. Uh, I, I think so anyway. Yeah, I mean, if you go up here, you'll get to the, the, the nice little park. See so, you. Know. There's a little park. Uh, this part of the city is still getting kind of cluttered up. Um, there's some stuff I can do here, but, uh, I think you're heading towards the guild district now, which yep. has the Fighters Guild, Mages Guild, and the Blackwood Company. And I, I, I think, I think it was positioned this way in originally in Oblivion, but I, I, I made sure that I kept the Fighters Guild and uh, the Blackwood Company facing each other. You know, like two cats on each end of a street just yeah. hitting each other. But uh, this little pond here is where a certain certain city palace guard will retire to and often swim in. Is this coming out for the TI-38 graphic calculator? Or just PC? It is coming out for the calculator, yeah. I thought we were allowing. Oh good, I was worried about that for a sec. Yeah. It is important.
Um, in the interest of time, is it maybe a good idea to go from here uh, to something completely different, like either the the sewers or maybe the Gold Coast? You could show the Vilvarin part. Maybe we'll explore around there a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Then go to the Gold Coast. What do you think, D? Yeah, sounds good. You wanted to show some of the forts as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. We we can oh. we can sort of like travel across the map, crisscross. It's just far less around this tower you haven't properly covered, right? Out of the three main. Yeah, we also have that vineyard that kind of overlooks the Imperial City, which oh, might yeah. be a nice one to uh Yeah. The visits. You know what let, let, let's do that. We'll 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 go to um the the sewers and then we'll go to that Chalman and I think that place is around there. So yeah. it's on the way anyway. You show off the shield yes there there is a someone asks is there going to be a painted world uh, and i'm sorry if I'm, I'm missing a lot of questions but i'm trying to to focus on the game as well it's a bit hard to multitask but uh, the the painted world is there yeah and it's actually worked on by uh d um maybe before we move on uh, something you may notice is the the loading screens look horrendous but it is the original Oblivion artwork. Um, we actually have uh, new artwork for this that we're trying to implement at the moment, um, which I hope we can maybe show off one or two loading screens in the next development diary or the one after that. Uh, we will see what happens. Uh, but just so you know that this is not really what is our intention when we think, oh, fantastic loading screens, look, look at the pixels. Will there be overhaul to loot and stuff? That's something I've actually worked on myself. Um, we've had to change things because the max level of gear is that spawning, like Deidre would spawn at level 20 in Oblivion, which is very low in Skyrim, right? That's a 20 hour year old character can get to level 20 pretty easily. Um, Oblivion, that's much more gameplay, so we've had to extend all those levels. The levels have been rejigged, they've pretty much been doubled, like, well, put up to Skyrim as a base, and then we can tweak it from there even more if we need to. I think my game you've, might be stuck. You've stuck, yeah. thought so. Will the Skyrim map be in Sky Oblivion? Um, you can console command your way to it, but we won't include any sort of way to travel there, Um, you know, immersively. Uh, due to just the fact that... um. I think we we change a lot of uh, Skyrim assets to fit Sky Oblivion as well as uh well the UI's changed. I think there's a lot, a lot of other things that we're depending on that might break a person's Skyrim experience. Yeah. So yeah, we we'd rather kind of leave that out. Will paintbrushes still fly? It's a question after my own heart that one. <laughs> um <laughs> Maybe you'll find a few. Well, text will be 4K by default. Um, basically, yeah. There's no point in every texture being 4K. You don't need 4K textures for cups and stuff. Um, all that to Nexus mods, default. dude. Yeah, 8K, 8K spoons all the way. <laughs> Unless you want to download 500 gig the game, then you probably won't want to download everything 4K. But we will have... Lots of things are 4K. All the armors, weapons are 4K. Um, Basically, the things that matter. Landscape textures, yeah. Like, I did a breakdown for the implementation team a, week, a few weeks ago, um, showing off like what can be lowered. Like, you don't need a 4K roof texture, right? You're not getting close enough to the roof to see 4K. A 1K roof texture is just fine. Yeah, exactly. Like that. It all goes into your performance and how much stuff is loaded into your video card and how much hard drive space you have someone has to see the uh, the shields correct yeah also changing doesn't, my uh that doesn't look too bad with the blades armor yeah it looks pretty good eh also uh, someone asked about the dream world as well here's the dream amulet that you have to wear to get into the dream world which is kind of cool Where's that shield? Oh, it's a grey age, it's so good. I need a good. You know, have you shown the blade shield off? 
No, no, yeah, but I, I figured, you know. Very cool. My blinds? Oh, it's D, Grey Ages. Did you implement SSC Creation Club creations, like Goblins, Saints, and Seducers, and Umbra Sword? Um, things like that we, we do ourselves. We have done our own Umbra, Sword and Armor, and Goblins. I see really a few questions like about Blade uh, Shield. Seen a few questions about Waywells, and I don't think there are any plans to. There's no depth you won't be looking at Waywell. That's definitely not an ASCO. Um, and I don't think there's any plans to add any like natural Waywells in. It's definitely something which wouldn't be too hard to do, though. That could happen. But there were, you, you won't be looking at Waywells. Will we fall frontal nudity? They won't. There won't be any nudity. Well, <laughs> for the. For the wolves, yeah. Um, the right. birds, yes. Uh, <laughs> I think some of our goblins will be topless. At least the females will be. They might be, yeah. But no no player nudity or characters. I mean, that's, let's not be sexist. Like, the, the, the male goblins are naked as well. Show some True. love to the boys. Like I have to say... Brand, I, that is brand, yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen this place with the new LOD. Even though the LOD crashes our game every once in a while. <laughs> this does look fantastic, holy shit. So, um, for those who maybe just tuned in or are not sure what they're looking at, this is what's going to be your view when you leave the sewers. Behind the, these gates uh, is where the tutorial dungeon takes place and where you're kind of introduced to the story. Um, so yeah, once, once you get out of the, uh, the, the sewer, this is going to be what kind of greets you. Uh, although you won't be wearing blades armor, you'll be wearing leather or iron. Will there be more NPCs in cities? Um, I, very unlikely, because the problem is with that, it's a lot more work to add in full schedules and all the, the following. And there's also no real voice lines for them to flash out those NPCs. So if they are, they'll just be, all they'll, they'll do is really fit out the generic rumor dialogue. Which isn't fun, right? Elder Scrolls games aren't about massive, empty cities. They're about intricate cities with lots of people who have all of their own sort of schedule and they do things and yeah. they live a life. Not like The Witcher 3 where you talk, you can't... There's not just peasant and nobleman walking around. Yeah. Great game, by the way. With totally, totally different... Yeah. Uh, oh, crap. The different be... sort of game, right? Yeah. Yeah. I just, just disabled able... the combat really quickly, so that's why they won't attack me, just so people are aware. Will you be able to get unique weapons from the arena combatants? Now, that's <laughs> that's a yes for certain weapons. We have done it for... Um, obviously, we, there's no point in us doing it for the the arena combatants that just have the standard, like, uh, you know, iron weapons and state weapons but those um i think it's an elf that has a certain magical dagger um yeah. we we went through the process of you know giving it a complete giving it its own concept art and then we had a 3d artist completely make that a unique dagger and when you go through that trouble you know you realize you have to give it to the player you know it's pointless just to tease the player with that and never let them get it as to how the player will get it, I think we're still kind of trying to figure that out. It might involve possibly a uh, a grave and a shovel and, uh, you know, <laughs> illegal activities. Sounds about right, be, yeah. You won't be able to pick that from the arena, though. Those rules will still apply. Uh, if you go to Fort Chalman, you're going the wrong way. You're going to the fort, which is currently nothing, by the way, Carl. I thought I was going to the uh, the vineyard. Oh no, I, I'm watching yeah. them. Sorry, I'm watching the YouTube stream. So, uh, I watch them. Look back the Twitch because it's way more up to date. I, I I know our own game. Don't worry. Okay, okay, okay. I know, I know where I'm going. This uh this this place gave me real blood and wine vibes from the Witcher Three DLC. It's exactly it's, what I kind of went for. So. Good. It looks Glad. so serene, so fantastical, and just great. I love the beehives as well, but hey, that's just because I love bees. Oh, 
of how one to one is this mod going to be to original Oblivion? In size, um, maybe just the tiniest bit bigger, um, but it's a lot more dense in terms of content. It's good to note that uh, f the floating bottle. Uh, it's good yeah, to all, note. All, oops. Yeah. All same quests, all same voice acting. Um, so pretty damn close. That's what we wanted. Yeah, but it's good to note that if you uh, if you haven't watched all the development diaries, I highly recommend you watch the first one since it talks a lot about the the scope of the project, uh, how we started out, and one of the topics we uh, we discussed there was also the scale of the game. Um, Oblivion's world map is actually uh, a lot bigger than both Morrowind's and Skyrim's, um, so you know. Uh, as as landscapers, not only do we have an impossible task ahead of us because we're kind of doing this in our free time, uh, we're we're modders, we're in you know some people's opinions, uh, uh, not professionals. Um, I think at this point, I, I I'm willing to say that uh, in some extent, to some extent, we are, but we're also working with a world map that's a lot bigger than what the developers for Skyrim, for instance, had to work with. Um, so you know, just just keep that in mind um, when when you take a look at our work. It's it's pretty pretty damn impressive. Um, but that's you know me project lead. I'm I'm super proud of what we've done. I'm I'm incredibly proud of the people who work in the project. Uh, we have Dikis with us today and the Ludist, um, who both when they joined the project did good work. Uh, but they've they've grown so much like your guys's work is is miles better than what it used to be And it's it's really cool to see that that growth uh, Across you know all the different people that are in the project um, that, That's that's something that yeah, it's cool Well, when you're when you're landscaping miles worth of work, you're you're gonna go, you know Miles better than what you were before. Yeah, you'd hope so <laughs> How much deviation is there from original Oblivion storyline? None. Exact same storyline. I also see a lot of hearts in the chat. Just want to say really appreciate that because um, I think one of the really cool things about this project is, for one, it's that we we get to work together. Um, I, I honestly I love I love our team. I love the people that are working this project. Um, the other thing that I, I really really love is uh, the the community around it. I, I'm not gonna say fans because it sounds kind of weird to say fans, but the the people that are are, are following us, um, that that are you know watching the streams, that are, are going to YouTube and, and telling us exactly what they love so much about Oblivion, and I think I think I think that's really cool and and very unique. And yeah, I think this is probably an experience that I'm gonna be talking about for the rest of my life. <laughs> And it's it's really cool to have been been a part of this, and you know, have met you guys as well, because uh, you know, I know I know I I'm sometimes give you guys a hard time, but I actually do kind of appreciate you and would even consider you a friend. But don't tell anyone. He said on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and this place is awesome as well. So this is uh, one of those remade forts. Um, in, in Oblivion, all the forts are really towers, um, not so much fortresses, and they, they are kind of generic, like they all use the same layout, more or less. Um, and one of the things, as we mentioned in the, in the dev diary, that we've been working on really hard is to um, remake these forts, give them a bit of a unique story depending on, you know, what they're involved with, um, and make it a lot more interesting for you guys to come across them. Um, again, it, it kind of comes back to that whole, we want to reward people who are, you know, explorers. Exploration should be rewarded in an open world game, in any open world game, uh, because it's it's one of your, your core pillars. If you don't want people to explore, then, you know, make it make a boring world. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm willing to say we kind of nailed the whole exploration thing, and uh, we made some really cool, uh, really cool areas. Someone oh, asked if you can show off the Umbra model, which is something we haven't showed off before. Oh, um, yeah. We could, we could do a first time kind of 
yeah reveal. i mean t to be fair i think i think we were showing a lot of things that we haven't really shown yet to people um so i mean that's what's kind of cool about this live stream so stick around i'm sure there's a lot more but yeah let's let's when 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 people say umbra do they mean the umbra swords or the completely unique umbra armor no one has seen or heard about um why not both that's so greedy. Yeah, it's pretty greedy. Yeah. Wasn't the armor in the dev diary? Oh yeah, it was. Well, the people didn't know but what it, it was. It, 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 wasn't, it wasn't named specifically. People didn't no. know what it was. It was just a new armor set. Uh, but yeah, Umbra, Umbra is a unique character in Oblivion that you're going to be uh, slaying. And she... Uh, actually, yeah. Let's, let's just turn uh, or put it on. She has a unique armor set, at least it has a unique name, but it was using, I think, the Ebony uh, model in Oblivion. Uh, yeah. With the only difference, the plume that was removed uh, from the, the helmet. Uh, and a unique weapon. Which is a Daedric artifact. But now, we also have a really, really beautiful armor set. Oh, I think there's a bug with... The helmet add-on, yeah. You might have to your old helmet. Yeah. That's my pro. That's my fault, that one is. You can blame me for that. Yeah. I'll fix it. Invitation leads, jeez. Yeah. And uh the sword. I think maybe for the for the YouTube folk, I think since it's a bit blurrier, maybe you could get a bit closer to the, the helmet. The um, the armor was made by uh, one of our older artists. When I say old, I don't mean age, but the amount of time he spent on the project. Uh, Borgia, who's also the 3D lead of weapons and armors. You can probably tell why. He was also responsible for some other sets like the, um, uh, the Blades armor. Uh, he made the Anvil guard armor, who we've not shown off yet, Mithril armor. Um, and the weapon is made by our 3D lead, Shadow, who is uh, mostly the lead of creatures, but does miscellaneous uh, assets as well, well and what weapons. What doesn't he do? Honestly, I, uh, Shadow is kind of this Swiss army knife. He'll do whatever he finds, and uh, he'll do it insanely well. Like, look at this sword. It's, it's so cool. And it's going to have a unique visual effect as well. Um... Because the uh, the blade sucks souls, so there will be. Should, should we, maybe maybe it's better to leave some things. Uh, yeah. Secret actually. Someone yeah, asked they... a lot of times if they'll be on Steam, um, and at the moment there's no plans for a Steam release. Um, that's definitely something that you know. That might happen down the line after release. Yeah. Um, yeah. But we would need help from people much much more capable of that. Talking about people who are capable, um, the Skyblivian project, as fantastic as it looks, is still looking for um, 3D artists, uh, texture artists, um, quest implementers, people who nav have meshers. general nav meshers, people who have general knowledge of the creation kit. Nav meshing is a big one that we uh, can use some 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 you know motivated dedicated people for. Um, so yeah, I mean if if you want to be part of this project of this undertaking, we would be more than happy to have you. Um, also, if you are just a quote unquote fan, if if you just want to follow the project, uh, we are on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Reddit. We have a Discord server as well. Um, and if you have a, a question that people ask a lot is, hey, I have no skills, how can I help? And it's going to sound stupid, but one, it, it's seriously always more than fantastic to see you guys, you know, being excited with us. Uh, that's super motivating. Um, but a way you can actually help uh, is to do something like share our video, uh, share a post on, on social media. Because that might help us reach, you know, that 3D artist or that landscaper, that interior designer, that quest implementer, that nav measure. 
um, that will be able to help us, you know, complete this project sooner. Um, it sounds simple enough, and you know, it it probably is, but yeah. uh, it's something that helps. A lot of a lot of people ask, like, is there a place they can donate and stuff like that? Um, we 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 want to be paid in more volunteers. <laughs> yes, send us send us souls. Yes. Thank you very much. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. Fresh meat. <laughs> well, no, first. Uh, someone was asking if this is the um, this is not the ebony armor. This is Umbra's unique set. Yeah, it's a unique armor set. We have a different set for ebony. Yeah. Evolve young scrolls to use as songs. I would love young scrolls to make like a nice little bard song for us. That'd be yeah. great. Have any of you developers played Enderall? Just curious. I have. I still haven't got around to it. Um, yeah, but same. You, same. Kyle, you are friends with some of the developers. Yeah, maybe? yeah. I actually had a drink with Nicholas um, from Sure AI. Fantastic guy. Really, really nice dude. I was um, uh, I was in Germany in 2018 uh, at the GameStar uh, headquarters, who have like their uh, their own gaming magazine in, in Germany, and they invited me to do an interview with them. Uh, and Nicholas was. Uh, in in the neighborhood so we kind of uh met up uh he joined us for dinner and a couple of drinks and it was great it was really cool to be able to talk with someone who's kind of been through the same thing you know he was he was kind of the project lead for enderall and was really refreshing to be able to kind of talk to someone who you know had a similar experience and you know they have a fantastic team i've played enderall for a little bit i never finished it though and i think the, the problem with working on something like skyblivian is that it kind of takes up most if not all of your free time so you will find yourself not playing a lot of games anymore um but you know a sacrifice that i will make any day of the week no regrets to the Uriel or martin models yet um they're not really new models they're just Char Skyrim characters so they've done at the moment and uh, they may get yeah. tweaks in the future to get some concept out to make them look a bit more like the actual actors who played them. I think that's what they tried to do in Oblivion but everyone knows Oblivion's character creator is pretty goddamn awful so I think they did pretty well at trying to do that. We actually got a guy on the team recently who's pretty good at um, you know making unique looking NPCs didn't we? Yeah, he might be able to take a look at those, maybe. Yeah. I saw a lot of people asking about the ebony armor, so allow me to oblige. Is this my tweaked one? It is, yeah. Stupid helmets. Sorry. <laughs> You still need voice acting, and uh, we don't. We've we've never uh, needed voice acting, um, other than you know our trailers and stuff like that and dev diaries. Uh, we'll be using Oblivion's uh, voice acting and porting it over from users' existing Oblivion yeah. installs. Um, Ludus, uh, actually, let me let me talk for like two minutes, and then I'll I'll give the mic to you because this is an area you worked on. It has an interesting backstory. You may want to sort of talk about for a little bit um okay. before i do that though i was gonna say something and i kind of lost my train of thought oh yeah um should we should we show off that uh, oblivion realm later if so i will need the files uh d and it's been sent all right cool then if the game crashes because it's it's been surprisingly stable we, we crashed once in almost two hours yeah. knock on wood and, and, and an infinite loading screen uh, yeah, okay, twice, I guess. That's a Skyrim bug, though, right? That happens in Skyrim anyway. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, but yeah, in, th in that case, um, to everyone who's watching right now, please stick around, because uh, we will show off kind of a premiere of the Oblivion Realm. We've, we've not shown that off before. Um, so that's going to be exciting. Actually, tomorrow we're expecting an update from Stade, who is, uh, as I mentioned earlier today, the lighting artist who made the weathers, um, with some volumetic lighting add-on by Ludist. Uh, and he will send us some new lava 
which supposedly looks even better than what we have already, so... Yeah, okay, anyway, uh, Ludus, you might want to talk. You know, I'm gonna take a step back again so we can we can admire this place from a distance and you can sort of be our guide and talk us through what we're looking at. Okay, um, I think this was the first bit, the first thought I did, I think, or one of them. It um, did it all on stream. Um, it's used in the Zero Visibility quest, I think it's called. Yep. May as well, where all the people have disappeared. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't know. It's um, There's a mage in the fort doing um, magical experiments and stuff, and he's affecting all the creatures and stuff around, and everyone's, everyone's invisible. It's all the creatures you find who are invisible at the start of the game. Um, probably one of the first side quests you'll come across if you choose to walk. Well, you'll have to choose to walk to uh, Wayne and Priory. So it's been expanded a lot before. It was just a tower. And I actually worked with one of my friends who's kind of like a big like history buff to kind of plan out something that was a bit more realistic around on the hillside um, instead of just a tower. So it's got like a big gatehouse now and we've got this uh, guardhouse building you're right next to. If you want to go inside, there's um, like a series of skeletons and stuff you'll find from when this was, was once a fort. Maybe the the battle that happened here or whatever you want to piece together. Who knows what happened, right? It's kind of the beauty of it. You, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think I think that's a really important part of level design is you you try to create snippets of a story, but it's it it's something I don't like in in some games is when you walk into a room and there's this note that kind of you know talks you through exactly what happened here from A to Z and that someone supposedly wrote in their deathbed. I'm I much prefer you know walking into a room like this and trying to you know make up the story in my own head. You know, there's some yeah. guys laying around. Covered in blood, holding weapons. Show and, don't you know, tell. Exactly. What? Show don't tell. E exactly. Show don't tell. Whoops. That's a that's a good storytelling technique that's used in movies as well as games. Yeah, very much so. It doesn't work as well in books though. Works horribly <laughs> in books. <laughs> you can have a really cool view of the uh, the fort. Can you go through this? Yes, you can. Great. Yeah, you can. But I think. But yeah, um, like I was saying, the note thing, uh, something I don't really agree with too much either. If you're going to do notes, they should be. Uh, say this is the. Well, I don't know if this strictly is, but say this is the, the soldiers that defended this fort. It'd be a nice way to, instead of saying, we're under attack right now or whatever, to have like a series of notes you could find displaying like a conflict between this cat, this fort and another fort or something. Oh yeah, for but sure. This is the yeah, yeah. Uh, main partner where you'll find... I don't know the guy's name. About to. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't mean that I think I think notes in these kinds of areas is bad. Uh, but I've, I've seen cases where, you know, you have this really long story and I just... Yeah. I, I, I kind of... I kind of figured, you know? Like a lot of a lot of things you put on paper, you, you can sort of... decipher Figure your own. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a lot better uh, in the end. Ankotar. Ankotar? Oh, you say his name. Yeah, Ankotar, yeah, right. Kind of forgot. Can you see the view from the top of the White Gold Tower? Um, you can't currently get to the top of the White Gold Tower and see any view because of no. a fix we had to resolve. Without going too technical, we had to disable the LOD in those world spaces because it was causing a bug where we couldn't edit the land data. Alright lads, do we go to uh, the Gold Coast next or should I go to another place that's maybe close to this? Um, I think the, I can uh, Gold Coast would be nice. Have you got the new stuff from Cynthia? Okay. Uh, there, yeah. there's, there's, the like Daedic, there's a Daedic shrine, though. A Fala shrine. That I kind of forgot. Or should I not do that? It does have kind of a cool view from uh, from up there. I'm not sure if you have um, my ESP for the Gold Coast scout. 
Mm, I might, I'm not sure. Turn us into the waterfront. We've already been to the waterfront. So why did you choose to remake Oblivion through Skyrim's engine instead of remaking Oblivion through Unity? I think that would have brought us into some legal issue. Uh, because it's it's much different when it's all that data that belongs to Bethesda going from one engine to another engine that doesn't belong to Bethesda. And I think the their, their archive formats might have something to do with it as well. And I think as well, it was easier. Yeah, um, I mean, if, if we'd done this in Unity or Unreal, that, that would have been impossible, really. We, we, we as a community, like as, as the modern community, is so much easier to find uh, people who are interested in doing this kind of thing. You know, we all know these tools better than any other. Um, and a lot of the mechanics are also already there, you know, from Skyrim, uh, creating a, a magic system, uh, a combat system and all that. Even though it's an open source, yeah, conversations and qu yeah. branching quests. I mean that that that's so much homework. It's not impossible, definitely not. But it it, it would be a lot of work to try and, and build that from the ground up instead of using um, Skyrim, which already had a lot of that baked in. Doesn't doesn't mean that this this is not a, a major major accomplishment. Um, and in its in its own right, it's it's almost you know a completely new game. But still, you know, the fact that we could build off of Skyrim systems was a really big help, and it, it did save a lot of time. And there's, only MB, this is, there's no EMB at all. There, um, this is all lighting through the engine. It was very tweaked. Any progress in the draw already They're already finished, aren't they? Really? Uh, pretty much, yeah. I want to redo some little parts, but other than that. And we're out of the forest, so will I'm going to go see the Gold Ghost. Will we see the cut city of such in the game? Somewhat, yes. Um, it, it won't be a city that you can go to, talk with citizens and, you know, go to shops. It'll be a ruined city. So a lot like... It's, it's sort of the middle ground between uh, it being a city and a ruin. So uh, hopefully it should provide a bit more uh, interesting grounds for the player to explore. What should a Daedric artifact to use or create? Um, I think one of the, my favorites now, after we got the new um, effects, is Goldbrand. It's really awesome now. Yeah. <laughs> Let me, let me yeah, pull it out in first person. There it is. Across both YouTube and Twitch, we currently have about 4,500 people watching. Oh my now. god. <laughs> yeah. That is so oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no pressure. Picture, picture all those people in a room. That's a stadium yeah. worth of people, right? Oh my god. I mean, oh my Todd. <laughs> this is also a really cool shot. You can see uh, Kavach burning in the in the distance, which is not something that was in Oblivion. It's something that uh, we added, or uh, I should say, stayed added. All the credits goes to him. Yeah. But it's it's we, such a cool distant or a detail being able to see the city burn from all over Suda. It also draws you to the location. If if you if you decide not to do any fast traveling, um, you can just organically see the, the the city burning, and it'll it'll catch your eye. And if unless unless you're an idiot, you, you're gonna go to to that to see what's up. Uh, someone asked about alchemy, which is a very good question. Actually, um, we are using. Um, so alchemy won't work like it did in Skyrim. There's no alchemy station. Um, it will work like it did in Oblivion, where you have your mortal and pestle, and you click E on it, and you'll enter a crafting mode like that again. Um, and I think I think that I think what works at the moment is you need the mortal and pestle uh, to start the crafting, and then the other ones give bonuses to the different aspects of alchemy. I think I don't quite remember. 
for having the other the retort, the alembic, and the how the other one's name. Those will give bonuses to alchemy, though. Um, I have two questions I kind of want to answer in quick succession. Someone asks, will it smoke forever? Uh, which is a good question, and I think we talked about maybe after you defeat Mayrun's Dagon, it'll stop smoking. Um, another question from someone is, are the grasses changed? Which is a very good question and something I want to quickly highlight. Uh, in our latest developer diary, which came out three days ago, four days ago, um, we talked about the Gold Coast and how it's a kind of like a Mediterranean area, lots of nice beaches, gold grass, um, and how the, the name Gold Coast is kind of derived from, you know, the, the, the look and feel uh, of the area, which is supposed to be gold. Um, some of you uh, gave us some feedback on the developer diary and said that the grasses looked kind of brownish or not gold enough, which was excellent feedback. It's something that we agree with and something we've talked about a couple of times in the past but we just didn't really do anything with it yet uh but seeing those comments coming from you as well made us go hmm maybe we should change it so now the grasses are actually in my opinion pretty golden and they look a lot better so i mean that that's that's why we really appreciate and, and we mean it when you when we say on the youtube videos you know let us know what you think if there's something you don't like let us know. It doesn't mean that I'll, I'll guarantee we will make changes because, you know, changes, even small ones, take time and, you know, we don't want to go back and forth uh, to our old work all the time. But a, a change like this was made in like 30 minutes by Cynthia, who's the landscaper for this area. And it makes all the difference and it looks fantastic now. It looks really great. Have you remit to hack dirt yet? Not yet. That's that's uh, in the Great Forest yeah. that's currently under construction. I also wanted to quickly put on another armor set, which is one of the uh, lower tier ones, the Iron Armor, which was uh, concepted by Geese and remodeled or modeled by Roy, which uh, for a low tier weapon armor, it looks fucking awesome. <laughs> I really love the way it looks. I really love the shield as well. I love the material, it looks so good. So fucking good. I'm always a light armor guy, but uh, I think in Skeblivion I'll, I'll go heavy armor for once, because the heavy armor sets look really, really good. Also... Oh god. Wrong voice actor. Someone just commented, someone from Bethesda is now watching this stream. I'm not sure if that's true or not. Would be awesome would be if awesome. it was. Yeah. yeah. Jinx. <laughs> oh, I see Roy is in chat on Twitch as well. Um, if, if anyone's watching on Twitch, give Roy a follow. Uh, he streams development. Like, he, he works on these armor sets uh, on Twitch every once in a while. Which is really cool. <laughs> Whoa, and I see someone in, in chat with the name Maik as well saying that was me. Nice. Uh, but yeah, Roy does fantastic work. He's also doing a lot of the city guard armor sets. Oh, I actually have uh, the skin grad armor on me as well. Uh, wait, do I? Yes, I do. Which was made by the same person, which looks... Fantastic. That's one of the things that I was talking about earlier, how we're trying to make uh, the game feel a lot more unique. Uh, that also goes for, in this case, the armor sets that the city guards are watching. So in Oblivion, the city guards used more or less the same model, but with different texture variations, which is fine. Like, it, it does the job. Um, but since we have a couple of guys who really love doing armors, uh, and we think it was worth it to make this, this addition, um, the, the, the city guard armors are now unique, and, uh, this is the, uh, yeah, this is the heavy skin guard armor set. Um, something we keep in mind when we design these armors is who is wearing it. So, Skingrad is a very, very wealthy city, uh, in Oblivion. Um, it, it has a lot of lucrative trade, it's, it's surrounded by vineyards, uh, and it's doing pretty, pretty damn well for itself. 
um, and we try to make the you know the area represent that the city represent that but also the the city guards um, represent that visually so I think all of that work you know just comes together so nicely and I think that's that's one of the coolest things um, I've seen in the Skyblivium project is that we we work with people from all over the world it doesn't it doesn't matter who you are or where you're from all that matters is if if you know if you're a cool person um, and if you love to do cool work then then you know we're more than happy to have you and we're, we're all just coming together and making this uh, hard to describe but I, I think I think this is just one of the coolest things I'm ever gonna work on in my life and uh, it's it's really awesome to see everyone's work just coming together so nicely and and you know it just works it really does I finally get it it just works you should have seen Imperial dragon armor um, that's not currently done uh, do you have the new palace armor installed I, I don't know no okay it's good, but if you've seen the palace armor the content is very similar to that but it's like an I think it's made of ebony I think right. we don't we don't have the model done yet though I think what does the take... armor look like uh, we have new redesigns by Giz. It's very, it's quite similar to the old concept, but very, very much improved. Much more fine details and stuff, but it, it'll look very familiar. Someone yeah. just happened to ask. I'm going to assume this is a no, but will there be any pole arms in the game? Oh. There'll be there'll be one, but it it it, it won't have its own sort of uh, you know unique animations or anything like that. Um, yeah. But there will be a pole arm in the game. Yeah, it's used by the uh, captains of the guard in Imperial City. Also, quickly wanted to show off this one. Um, oh yeah, the uh, the arena quest line. I I don't have the boots really. Oh man. Uh, you take the off your boots? Oh. No, no, the, the boots are part of the same mesh, aren't they? Uh, not anymore. Also, there's a oh. seam with the neck, but we we can fix yeah. that later. Um, one of one of the coolest things I think from Oblivion, one of right, not the coolest, but one of, um, is the uh, the arena quest line, where you go, f you, you literally go to the main capital of the province to fight gladiators to the death, and I think that's such a cool concept. And originally in Oblivion, you were gonna do this in every city, before you go to the uh, Imperial City where the you know the, the you would fight the Grand Champion, um, but you know. Too bad we don't have that. Uh, we're not going to add that, by the way, before people get ideas. <laughs> um, but what's really cool is if if you you know if you fight your way to the top uh, and you become the grand champion, you get a unique armor set, which, as you may have guessed, we have uh, made a unique concept for and modeled to be uh, unique as well, which is this one. Whereas your regular um, arena armor is uh, either. This one, the heavy armor, Raymond, or the light armor, Raymond, which has an issue. Oh no, it doesn't have an issue. No, it kind of has an issue with the gloves. They go invisible sometimes. Um, what the hell? I've never seen that oh. before. There's one for the bug list. Yep. Someone was asking. <laughs> can, you, um... can you take off the amulet? Uh, yeah. No, it still doesn't. Uh, okay, weird. Someone was asking um, if we could see the Dark Brotherhood armor. Ooh, yes. Routed. A lot of people also asked for... Oh, do I not have that? Oh, didn't you show it off? Emerged? It oh, it's in, it's, it's in the build, yeah. I don't. I just don't have what it on me. Maybe show off uh, the unique one? Unique what? The shrouded armor. Uh, yeah. My, uh, does Let's any of you have help, Ochiva? Help what? Ochiva. How do you write o -C -H -O -C -H -E -V -A? that? O C H E V A. Might be an I in there. Help me, chat. It's double E, I think, instead of I. Oh, E. I think, yeah. Yeah, all right. 
player dot place at me. Or you oh, say you could also just added the armor as well. But okay. Oh, controllers work. Uh, yeah, it 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 works for Skyrim. So same engine, it'll work straight out. Simple. Plug so and play. This is... So this is um, a unique set we have just for Ochiva in the game. Uh, if you don't know who Ochiva is, she's probably the person one of the people you deal with the most through the star, the mid stage of the Dark Brotherhood. Mm -hmm. Once you joined, you, you get a lot of contracts from her. And um, for those of you who know the Dark Brotherhood quest, I won't spoil it, but you all you can get the armor. Oh, can I? I'm, I'm going to guess she's not. Killable, probably, right? She's probably essential. Yeah. She, when if you search, if you if you do help with Chiva, her armor comes up there. Oh right. Yeah. It's uh, called Chiva's shrouded armor. I want the regular one as well, uh, but sure. Okay. Zero six zero nine three. You'll learn one day not to put that starting zero. I know. I just I'm used to it. I know you're gonna, <laughs> gonna you're gonna say it as well. <laughs> I say it every time. Yeah. All right, let's let's go for a little jog. How many people are watching now? I'm sorry. I'm curious because it's uh, it's going up. Twitch and four thousand six hundred. So slowly yeah. creeping up. Yeah. Uh, if you're on YouTube, by the way, something that kind of helps to get the stream. Uh, discovered by more people is to like it. Sounds stupid, but it really does help. So if you haven't yet, <laughs> smash that like button. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was thinking it. I, I didn't. I didn't want to say it. <laughs> smash that like button, guys. So don't forget to smash sub. <laughs> Subscribe to the uh, Skabuvian oh, squad. Comment your favorite armor. <laughs> Cool project. Glad you like it. Oh yeah, D. Let's see what happens when I get close to um, Crowhaven. I think I've seen it in game, so I, I must have your plugin. Play. I, I thought I, I thought I couldn't see its uh, LOD, so I wasn't sure maybe if I was looking at the right thing or not. The new grass looks so much better, guys. It does look like it. Yeah, it does. And the lighting and everything. And again, this is we're not using any post-processing or ENBs. This is just the weathers of Skyblivion. Which again were made by State. Like all the credit goes to him for really, really, you know, bring this whole visual presentation home. But it looks so, so good when it all comes together. Ah, oh, no, I don't have it, dude. Sorry. The volumetric lighting also helps a lot, right? You can do yeah. a comparison if you want to show you what it looks like without the volumetrics. You do TVL in the console. No, it's a little one. Daedric Armor. we've shown off already. Uh, this, this video will go back up live after, right? Yeah, the, the, the video will go up either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, I'm not sure what's going to happen. The Daedric Armor 3D happen. models are done. They've not been implemented yet. So we're waiting for the set from the, the artist. Um, he's done a great job on it so far. But uh, and we're also planning on doing some, some special things for the armor. As well, some some custom light effects with uh, so maybe a mission maps and stuff. Yeah. This is uh, really quickly what the game looks like without the volumetric lighting, which again it's it's not an EMB, it's a, it's a feature supported by the engine. Um, this is what it looks like with That's... so you get the the light rays going through the leaves and stuff. Um, what's the so you know? Oh, yeah, the uh, the likes went up by a thousand apparently when you said to like the video. <laughs> so, All right, remind me to say that again at some point. Yeah. <laughs> wow, it's serious. It's really great to see all you guys and enjoying this. We we did this um uh this live stream Q and A idea super late. We didn't prepare it properly, but. uh 
yeah, it's this response. I, I wasn't, I was expecting a lot of views, but I was thinking, you know, maybe like a thousand at most. This is uh, incredible, absolutely incredible, and the the reception for the developer diary was so amazing and very humbling, and uh, it's really cool to see that so many people are, you know backing us, standing behind us while we do this, and uh, are so excited about the work, are liking what we're doing, so it's... Yeah, thank thank you guys. Big big round of applause from us to you. Because, um, you know, it, it works both ways. Without an awesome community, there, were, there wouldn't be a project. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much as well. The Wild Gamer, I've seen you ask that question a lot. I'm, I'm sorry, I keep into answer, I keep forgetting. Um, there will not be a Kvatch Reborn kind of deal um i'm sure some other models will make that or when scheduling is over completely until the dlc done i'm i don't know i'd be half tempted to stick around and keep making some mods for scheduling so who knows there might be an official dev one in the future a long way away but not until all the dlcs are done at least but i'm sure there'll be mods for that yeah. Are faithful do you guys plan to be towards the designs of the original cubes um so Remaking the caves, we're keeping the, uh, you know, the basic layout, but we're otherwise we're completely remaking them. Uh, also, the the layout it, it really depends on what cave, because yeah. a lot of layouts are just completely redone because they're not fun from a level design perspective. Yeah, if I'm being honest. So uh, it it really depends on the cave, um, but we're with every single cave we're getting them up to skyrim's standards because skyrim really stepped it up uh, when it came to the, the caves yeah there will be scheduling mods um it's a well we are modders we're not going to stop you from modding the game right so when scheduling oh. is out um you'll be able to people will be able to create mods and do whatever they want we're um slowly making our way towards kvatch by the way uh, you can see okay. the smoke plumes are getting bigger. Um, a quick warning is that the uh, the area around Kavach is not the furthest along. Uh, it's a pretty heavy work in progress. Um, it's actually... I, I don't have the latest plugin for it, so it's a lot further than what we're going to be looking at. Um, but I kind of forgot to ask for the latest plugin, so that that's on me. But yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, Goes. yeah. Um, someone asking for the Imperial City. Um, there's not much way to see in the Imperial City from Oblivion. It's a very much just a ported version at the moment. Um, I'll be working on that at some point, and I plan on not changing too much, to be honest, because, well, it's very hard to because of the meshes involved that are very modular and you can't really change it. And also, it's a pretty unique city anyway and very memorable. It, there was nothing wrong with the design of that city anyway, so there'll be definitely some changes. Um, I mean, Kyle, you showed, showed some lore about the ancestor moth trees and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think the Green Emperor Way isn't going to be just a massive graveyard anymore. No, I think... It's going it, to it, some gardens and stuff in there as well. Well, there will still be graves, but maybe just from, like, important people, very rich. I don't think any, just anyone could have a grave in the Green Emperor Way. Yeah, without being too specific, the, the the Imperial City itself is just gonna look a hell of a lot more interesting and and just it'll be a little bit more beautiful. Yeah. Um, also, remind me to maybe go to Exhausted Mine after this because we were talking about level design earlier. Um, Exhausted Mine is one of the interior locations that I remade um, a couple months ago. It was shown in the second developer diary. Uh, it's definitely not the best in terms of level design, but I know it. So I know where to go and what to show. And on top of that, it also has the, the new goblins from Shadow and Weekend, um, which we haven't showed before. So it might be interesting to to give that a, uh, a showcase as well, real quick. So you can see there's already been big progress since the dev diary. The new new goblins are already in-game. They weren't in the dev diary, even though there's only a few days old, really. Um, yeah. Those goblins have just come in in the last few days, and our build is constantly changing, and there's new stuff coming in and out. That's all of my job, pretty much. Right? Every asset, every new asset comes in through me. So, I get horse... assets of the daily, so. Do horse testicles shrink like in Red Dead Redemption 2? Uh, no, but our horses can <laughs> climb ladders. That's true. The Imperial line is dead, and the gods have forsaken. Hey, Rebel, you should show the uh, unicorn. Our blessing. 
Oh, yeah, we good good shout. Uh, yeah, remind me to go to the unicorn. Um, the what, what's it called? And we die alone. The little uh, area? Uh, Something glade. Lord I mean, Robert. the glade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, hello, Shadow. I'm just can talking to the, the priest. Friends. Maybe you should ride the unicorn to the uh, cave. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's pretty close. Gotcha, yeah. yeah. Well, some will be coming afterwards, as all DLC content will be. Alright, yeah, maybe... Maybe everyone can, can uh, not to be a dick, but everyone can uh, be silent for a bit, so that people can see the cool transition when you go near an Oblivion Gate, sound effects and visual effects. So, you know, just... Maybe everyone... Shut up. Sh shut up! Thank you. Stand back, civilian. This is no place for you. Get back to the encampment at once. We lost the damn city. That's what happened! It was too much. Too fast. We were overwhelmed. Couldn't even get everyone out. There are still people trapped in there. Some made it to the chapel, but others were just run down in the streets. The Count and his men are still holed up in the castle. And now we can't even get back into the city to help them. With that damned oblivion gate blocking the way. The only thing we can do. We'll try to hold our ground, that's what. If we can't hold this barricade, those beasts could march right down and overrun the encampment. I have to try and protect the few civilians that are left. It's all I can do now. You want to help? You're kidding, right? Hmm. If you're serious, maybe I can put you to use. It'll likely mean your death, though. Are you sure? I don't know how to close this gate, but it must be possible, because the enemy closed the ones they opened during the initial attack. You can see the marks on the ground where they were. The great gate right in the middle. I sent men into the gate to see if they could find a way to shut it. They haven't come back. If you can get in there, find out what happened to them. If they're alive, help them finish the job. If not, see what you can do on your own. The best I can say is good luck. If you make it back alive, we'll Kyle. Be <coughs> Kyle? Yep. You're on the starting soon screen for me? What? Thing. Oh, no. Uh, just switched. Or he just switched. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoops, my bad. <laughs> That's what happens when you hit uh, the wrong key, I guess. Yeah. Um, something to note is that we talked about, uh, with, with our composer, about uh, creating a unique sound, or a unique, what do you call it, soundtrack song. For when you approach the Oblivion Gate, so you, you don't have the you know the the, the peaceful music, uh, which you do now. Um, also, to have a, a, a soundtrack like that for when you're inside the gates, which I think is great. Uh, another good thing to note is that these are not the new armors for the Kavach Guard. These are the the ported ones from Oblivion, which we're using as a placeholder until you know the new ones have been made, and they're actually being worked on by Roy. Um, I think actually they were they were done. Right? They're on Trello now for implementation, or Perhaps. am I wrong? Yeah? I don't think so. I think he was mapping up textures, I think. Oh, yeah. The 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 model modeling job is done then. It's yeah, the texture the work that uh, that needs to be done. 
Yeah. All right, gotcha. But yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I don't remember the first Oblivion Gate and Kavash looking this sexy. And the weather, again, uh, was made by State. Absolutely fantastic lighting artist. Um, yeah. It's uh, pretty fantastic. Hey, Scamp. Would quest sound effect be changed to Oblivion's? Um, I think that's something we can do. Alright? That should yeah. be something we can do, because I know it's using Skyrim at the moment, but definitely switching yeah. with Oblivion would be a nice touch. Yeah. Well, some NPCs actually have beards. That's a that's a funny question as well, because yeah, in, in Oblivion, everyone was uh, very yeah, well shaved. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. The, the, you you have this this weird painted on beard as well. Uh, but generally speaking, yeah, there were no beards. And in Sky Oblivion, when we remaking when we were remaking the NPCs, uh, we gave some of them beards. Um, it 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 it's kind of you know like the 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 beggars. Are, are you know a bit beardier since they are not taking care of themselves as, as well as they should or could can um, maybe a count is like a really tidy beard um, but yeah there are beards actually no he's clean shaven he's a monk or a priest Someone sorry if um, the oblivion model is final that's still the ported one yeah so that is completely oblivion yet that's one the, we haven't started on oblivion architecture yet and that Portal is included in Oblivion architecture, so one day, yeah. but not yet. We're actually at the moment we we talked about this yesterday as well. Uh, what we want to do is we want to do the Oblivion assets um, as the very last thing when it comes to remaking the models, uh, because we feel like you know we've learned a lot during the development of this this game. I'm just gonna call it a game because it's kind of its own game. Um, we've learned so much that we kind of want to make the Oblivion Realms the best it can be. So from a level design perspective, we want to, we didn't want to start working on it until, you know, uh, we were on, on top of our game, which we are at now-ish. Um, and the world map is going to be finished soon anyway, so landscapers are going to be working on those realms soon-ish, TM. Um, soon, yeah. but from a, from a 3D perspective, it's, it's the same thing, you know, we learned... Um, how to make beautiful looking assets uh, and how to make them well optimized too. Um, so now or now soon will be the time for us to you know start working on those last big claims and, and get that out, um, finish it and, and do it well because at the end of the day you're going to be you know we're going to be going through a lot of oblivion realms. The, the game is literally called Oblivion and it's called that for a reason. Um, and if the if the realms are really boring and they they are visually not very impressive, then you know your impression of our work is going to be tainted, um, in my opinion anyway. So it it made sense for us to to want to wait and do this um, last big chunk of the work, which would be the Oblivion Realms, uh, at the very end of the development cycle, and then you know go out with the bang. Hey Wes, how's it going, mate? Hey guys. Hey Wes, good of you to join us. Hey, thank you. You can pull up the stream. I can send you links if you need. That'd be helpful, thank you. I'll just go and find that. Awesome stream. Uh, as I mentioned yeah. earlier, this part of the game is a bit more rough. A bit more of a work in process. Wait, progress. That's the word I was looking for. Um... So don't yeah, don't judge it too harshly. Yeah, it does kind of work, doesn't it? Also, because I'm I'm running around with um oh about that because I'm running around with the same uh, or with the the same weathers and the same time of day. It might be fun for you guys to see what it looks like at night. Um, rest assured, it's not always great, great weather in Cyrodiil. Um, it can rain, can be foggy, can be cloudy. It's just that uh, it's 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 easier for me to show it off in, in good weather, so you guys have the best possible view. But yeah.
3624 watching. Yeah. And then on YouTube is 800, so cool 4,500 people. How much are you, right? I'm not intimidated at all. No. Picture them all naked, right? Well. Doesn't really help, to be honest. It seems weirder that way. Yeah, it's bit, that yeah. would be worse, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure whoever <laughs> came up with that uh, that advice, but it's terrible advice. Yeah, I agree. Um, it might might be good to do uh, go into the exhausted mine really quickly, so I can sort of we can show off some some uh, interior level design, roughly. Uh, also, the yeah, we we can. Oh yeah, we we, can, we were gonna go to the unicorn grove first, and then. Yeah. Uh, right there, right. So we're, we're doing some work when it comes to the creature design. Well, hey, some work. We're um. I go. Hey, Doig. We're uh, we're trying our best to make, uh, like I like we've said multiple times during the stream, a unique world, um, filled with with detail and things for you to discover. One of those things is the Unicorn Grove, which is somewhere around here. Is it marked on the map, or should I go uh, to... It's near the inner development, yeah. I know what that is. This area is very much work in progress as well. Well, not work in progress, but going to be reworked because we're adding a new type of forest in there as well. Right, I can look. Yeah, you're very close to it. No, oh, You did hover over it. South of the Imperial City. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot we had a search, search feature, so oh. I just cheated. Fair enough. Um, yeah, but one of one of those cool unique creatures is the uh, the unicorn, uh, which you can obtain. Oh, actually, the minotaurs are there as well. So yes. bonus. You guys, you guys are in for a treat. You're gonna see the new minotaur and the unicorn, and the goblin straight after. And if you um, magic, magic will be the same as Skyrim for the most part. The two hand system and. Um, a possible plan to add in um, quick casting, which will probably work through the kind of shout mechanic from Skyrim. So you can build a hold, a hold a shield, sword, and then cast a spell, potentially. If that's not in-game at the moment or working, that's something we would need to work on, though. I think you're going the wrong way, but they can You're going east, do you want to go? They're east of you slightly, I think. I thought, I thought it was over there somewhere. It's a little mountain map market you should see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, Dyg as well. Welcome. There's a awesome. couple of uh, 4,500 people watching, so no pressure. <laughs> I hope everyone's enjoying the Q&A. Saw seems someone to be. ask, saw someone ask, will there be uh, auroras in northern parts like Burma? And we actually stayed actually worked on something where uh you can actually see the auroras over skyrim yeah, yeah so you won't see it directly over your head in bruma but you'll be able to look further north to in over skyrim and see it yeah that's maybe um an sure area yeah that's that's let, maybe someone can write that down it's a really cool uh, little detail and it's in a really cool area as well um so yeah, let's let's maybe visit that afterwards. You can still go the wrong way, Carl. Yeah, I noticed. <laughs> Must be uploaded later. Uh, yeah, let's go straight up after the stream, right? The whole thing should. Should be. It, it depends on on how uh, lenient uh, YouTube is going to be after the stream. Okay. Is on special edition. Yeah, it's currently only special edition. We may try and backport it, if that's possible. But we had to move over to Special Edition because of um, the game engine's 32-bit uh, limitation. Yeah, is, this, think... is this the new statue of uh, her scene? No, yes. it's old. Yeah, is it? it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. But it's, it's, not been, it's not been worked on, really. Oh, the... I, haven't done, I haven't done the location yet. How yeah. dare you. It looks awesome, though. Yeah, this is also one of the reasons why we thought doing a Q&A and a, and, a, and a sort of like a live gameplay demo is interesting because 
in the in the trailers and in the in the development diaries you see uh our work you know our, our finished work but there is also you know work left to be done uh like putting a statue where it should be and also you know making the the area around it look more interested and, and base it off of you know the in this case the daedra god that's being worshipped um so you know we're, we're trying to be transparent with you guys and, and show you you know the the raw product this this is skyblivian right now um it's pretty awesome but it's it's you know it's not finished it has some some work left uh to be done some people be asking for spells and you can show the spell menu off if you type psp in the console you get all the spells added to your inventory as well so you can PSP or PSP? PSP. Play a spell book. Didn't work. Is that the Spellbreaker shield? No, that is the Dwarven shield. No, this is this is uh, the Grey Ages. That is the Grey Ages. Never mind. The Q, it's a QNA, Jack. You're supposed to answer I questions. Know, ooh, fuck. ooh! 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 I see it. Kind of cool. You see how misty it is now? Oh, PSB. Oh, yeah, you write book with a B, not a P. My bad. Oh. <laughs> Papa Sierra. No, yeah. Papa Sierra. Bravo. Yeah, this is the uh, Unicorn Grove. The um, the combat is disabled, so uh, they're not gonna attack us. I mean, they're 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 not happy to see us, and uh, our character, if we take the helmet off, is gonna be a bit displeased as well. But this way, we can you know we can look at them from up close and actually admire the work that's gone into them. I made an ESP that made them a little bit taller as well. Right, so that'll cool. be next mage, because and uh if you yeah, stand yeah. on the same level as them, they're not too intimidating. They're kinda not too much off you on the same height. Well Well, yeah. <laughs> you do look a lot more intimidating now. <laughs> the cool thing about the the unicorn is that it's fucking awesome, it's beautiful. Oh, and the game crashed. Well, that sucks. Didn't even get to ride it. Uh, can you give me the coordinates, maybe, real quick, someone? So we don't have to... The hubris of man trying to ride a unicorn. Yeah, no worries, <laughs> we'll, we'll get it back. Um, while we have an intermission, uh, if you are interested in Skyblivian and you think what we do is really cool, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Reddit. We have a Discord server you can join. Um, if you are a 3D artist, texture artist, if you have experience using the creation kit, if you know how to implement quests, if you're a level designer, um, we would love to have you on the team. Oh, a nav masher as well. Another one that's uh, desperately needed at the moment. Um, so yeah, I mean, we, we can use all the help we can get. And lastly, maybe if you're watching on YouTube, um, something silly that really does help is to uh, like the video because it makes it easier for people to find it online. I'll start like button. Smash that like button. Hit follow. Smash subscribe. Smash and smash. <clears throat> um. Actually, is is slash and smash is that merged into this build? Because uh, that's an interior oh. I'm kind of proud of, and it looks really cool. Let's see. Also, if, if people don't have much or any experience with modding, then please do still join the community it server. Because lots of people are really happy to help you out. So if, if you're prepared to learn and prepared to put the work and practice in, then there'll always be people there to guide you, point you in the right direction, and yeah. help you on the way. Lots of people kind of, well, everyone says, I wish I could do what you guys do. I've seen lots of people say that, but everyone, all of us started knowing nothing. Yeah. Right. No one is born knowing how to do something. You have to put the effort in and put the time. Like lots of us have been doing this for years, right? Yep. Yeah. 
it's, it's, it's a lot of practice and mo most people who are doing the um doing the stuff love doing <laughs> um sort of the, the way we feel is the best way to do something and so i'm i i'm always happy if someone has any questions then um buy 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 them off in the community server and then there will there will be an answer to your questions where the hell did my save files go okay i've already thanks for stopping by mom right, whatever you lost it all uh no, I just, I, just, I just can't find it. Oh. Lost all of his progress. Is the build not very stable? There is a new LOD we have, which is causing some issues at the moment. Level, uh, LOD is level of detail. It's all the meshes you see which aren't actually loaded in by the game. Yeah. And we're so still sort of tweaking the LOD. Uh, you know, I think it's a little bit excessive at the minute, isn't it? I said again. You're still tweaking the LOD, so it's yeah. Uh, I think at the minute it's a bit excessive, which might be causing it. Yeah, it definitely causes the new one's a bit worse performance as well, which will need to be toned back down a little bit. Yep. But so we made it. There we go. The uh, the cool thing about the unicorn is that well, it uses a unique model, but also you know, Shadow, who is with us right now, is the guy who made this, uh, and I. You know, he kind of went above and beyond with this one. He even has really nice braids in in the in the main. It has a horn. So yeah, it makes him very much a unicorn, I think. Also, I have to say that the, the the level of detail on this mesh is great. You can see all the muscles, you know, when when he walks around. It's really cool. Veins the, in the stomach. I love the braids because I'm just imagining the Minotaurs doing that for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ooh. All right, that didn't hurt. Great. How close is the project to completion? Um, an amount. We don't really know. We don't have a release date or anything like that either. So I know lots of you guys have asked for release dates, but we've kind of ignored the questions. But there is no release date. Uh, lost in mind. Oh, it's quite a trip. Good trip. A good trip, yeah. We'll, we'll we'll go past the sunflower fields as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll take a little thri thri trip um, through the map, um, riding our lovely unicorn, um, and we'll we'll go to one of the uh, remade dungeons. Maybe use clear weather. There we go. Um, to give you an example of what what has changed with the uh, the level design of of dungeons, how that's been reworked. Um, also, I think after it might be a good time to do that um, premiere, like first time showing off Oblivion Realms, maybe. Yeah. Because we've never done that before. Uh, also, to show the Aurora right of the Skyrim. Oh yeah, we were going to show a quick the Aurora, fast yeah. travel that can be kind of. Yeah. Is such feature custom made? I think it's a part of Sky UI, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's the Sky UI feature that we uh, that we're using for that. Our UI is a reskin of Sky UI. Do you all use Maya or 3ds Max? Um, some people use Blender. I think it just depends on the artist, what the art artist is comfortable with. Yeah. I'm a big fan of Blender. I try and use Blender throughout the entire process, even for texturing. Uh, lots of people love to use uh, Substance Painter, so Adobe. Is it dude on horseback? This is a hold up. The flame effect? Uh, Roy, Roy is wrong and needs to learn how to use Blender, so pl please ignore Roy in the chat when he's uh, saying Maya Master Race. That is not a thing. <laughs> I can't believe you didn't give him the gold, Kyle. Fuck him. That's why. You gotta steal it back, though. I don't want to steal it back. I want to kill him. Oh. Gotta get that classic Oblivion meme, though. Yeah. Nice so stop caring. It's great. It's kind of a nice area. Like, it has um, all these sunflowers growing in the fields. 
Do you have that uh, sewer tile set? It's not implemented, no. I think it needs collision still, right? Oh yeah, it needs collision. Is there a collision you might now? be able to show them off if you want. Cause... As in, you ha I can download it right now, or...? Yep. Okay. Might depend on the on the download size, too. We'll see when uh, when the game crashes again. <sighs> also, I, I, I can't for life me get over how good the Grey Ages looks. I have to show it off again. Wait, do we not have it on this character? No. No, you added it to a... Oh, I added it oh. Level, uh, later. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, well, what was the original uh, model for the Grey Ages? Steel Shield, I think. Oh. I just love how ours has, um, has all, like, the schools of magic sort of Very etched nice. into it. Are you using an EMB? There's no EMB, no. This is all just Skyrim lighting. Can you show Somerset? <laughs> does, it, does it not have any of the lighting tweaks you did, Luke? The volumetrics are all in, yeah. But that's all still Skyrim, right? Okay. Oh. Hey, Rax, how's it going, mate? So this is one of the unique uh, models for the people who uh, are only maybe now joining us. Uh, we're, we're, we're trying to to swap between all the different armor sets and all the unique weapons that we have in the game right now. Um, yeah, this one does look pretty... It's such a big jewel. <laughs> I think I think it's what's used to absorb the Magicka. Um, it, it looks like it looks a bit like Welk. Or, you know, Welk and stone. Does it, yeah. Oh, I have to drop this. No, oh, you bastard. Did it crash? No. Yes. Download the stuff while we're at it. Um, I'll try that shadow now. Yeah, the um, wait. Let me let me install while I'm at it the Bruma Gate really quickly. Uh, the the uh, Oblivion Realm Gate. Um, yeah, don't don't worry. The stream will be up in a second. Uh, I'm just installing something special for you guys that we've never shown off before. <clears throat> Uh, D, if you can do me a favor and type that in the Twitch chat uh, when we do get to it, because I'm not going to remember that. Thank you. All right, let's do this. How is the um, how is the quality on YouTube, by the way? Is it really that bad, or is it okay? Um, it's only in 720p, so and it's pretty bad. Better, but... It's pretty blurry for 720, unfortunately. Yeah. It's this YouTube's compression, unfortunately. Damn it. Any Easter eggs? There are definitely new Easter eggs added, yeah. <clears throat> In that case, uh, what I'll do, I'll just go straight to the exhausted mine. Uh, then we'll go to Bruma, and after that, we'll go to the uh, the gate. Next, the nine will uh, come out after the main release. individual sets to be able to like the seal set we could potentially add more in the future um i don't know if there's any plans to though really well i keep writing game out wrong Um, so this is something we haven't showcased in the in 
in, in on our social media or the new dev diary so far. It's uh, the new goblins, which were made by Shadow and Weekend. Uh, they're naked right now. They're going to be wearing armor, but this is their base version, if you will. I um, thought it would be cool to include this since in the developer diary they were... I don't know, they kind of look like Gollum. Uh, with a hangover. Uh, and now they look like proper goblins, which uh, is great. Um, and yeah, we'll be going into this cave, which is actually infested with them. Um, it's connected to a quest that sends you in here because, um, well, you know what? Watch, watch uh, developer diary number two. It it goes into the, the backstory for the cave, for all this, what you're uh, looking at right now. Ah, the marker for this is... I think if I remember More right. That. Ah, there it is. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, we're going to be taking a quick look at one of the remade dungeons. Uh, we were talking about level design earlier and how we're recreating mines, caves, etc. Um, for me, this is a special one because it's uh, my f my first uh, dungeon that I remade for Skoblivion. Uh In hindsight, there's a lot of things I would have done differently. Uh, but generally speaking, I'm, I'm pretty proud and pretty happy with it. Um... So, the way I designed this this cave uh, is based off some dialogue that you get for the quest that plays or that goes on in here. Um, the man that sends you to the exhausted mine says that it's a very confusing um, maze almost of, you know, uh, twists and turns um, that lead you deeper and deeper into the mine shaft. Um, so that's what I tried to do. I tried to make it confusing. There's a lot of different paths you can take. Um, and yeah, everything together, um, tries to, you know, just kind of confuse the player. Um, something that I put in the game though, or in this level to kind of help you navigate through the level is the rails. Uh, if you follow the rails, you'll go directly towards the entrance. Uh, if you deviate from the rails, well, then not so much. Um... Again, this is this is not by far the best level design in the game. Uh, I consider myself to be one of the the weaker level designers, really, when it comes to designing the dungeons. But I do okay. Um, and so let me uh, we'll leave the combat on actually. Something the, the, that we we mentioned a couple times as well is we want to reward exploration. You want to tell a story. Um, so something I tried to do here was have a goblin that's been crushed by a log that fell from. Well, up there somewhere, I think there's some cheese laying around here. Well, there should have been cheese. Um, and yeah, there's a little little platform, but if you jump straight ahead, uh, you'll bump into the Stella side, so you kind of have to jump around it, and I fucked it up. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Also, not sure what, what the idea behind this was, but kind of like a shrine, I guess. Alright, and they're boxing me in, good. Just to say, Rebel is really selling himself short, and he's done a fantastic job on this cave. Well, to that I say, uh, have you seen some of the other work? Holy shit, dude, there's a... Uh, why is there uh, a thousand... There's a thousand people on Twitch. Oh, well, you, you just got a read. From who? Pathetic Ball. Oh, fuck. Awesome, dude, thank you very much. Oh crap, and now because I was distracted, I just kind of jumped into the hole. Um, that's not the interesting one. Yeah, I, I really hope that some people will not watch their step and fall through this because uh, it brings you into this lower level where you'll be welcomed by uh, more goblins um, and a bit of treasure right there. Nice chests, but you can only get through. Whoa, that was a close one. You can only get in here if you uh, you actually fall through the hole or you walk all the way around. Because obviously you're not stuck here. You can you can get out. Um, if we walk past these guys, hey Bob. Um, another bit of visual storytelling 
is uh, here where I try to make it look like part of the mine has collapsed and, you know, one of them is crushed. Um, but yeah, in order to get out, you have to sort of backtrack and go all the way around. And oh, then you're back the where you started. This is the cave when you have the narrative of the, uh, the miners breaking in accidentally into the goblin's nest, isn't it, guys? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which we'll show off right now because it's the the next level. Uh, and after this, we're going to check out Bruma, the Orea, or the Ore Borealis. Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis, that's the one. Um, and the the fairy, I guess the, the first official look at the Oblivion Realms in Skoblivion, which we've never showcased before, so stick around. What does the local map look like? I think I still Skyrim's at the moment. I think that's in part of the UI that needs to be done. Yeah, <laughs> still Skyrim's at the moment. Shearing Owls will be later on in development. There's no weapon repairing system. Um, sleep. Random event on you sleep? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Uh, maybe he's talking about sleep to level up, which you had in the yeah. Um I thought we're doing that, are we? Uh, I mean, at the moment we don't have it, but no, who, it's know, not, who no. knows? Yeah. Um, Part of the this... constant changing aspect of a project like this, we don't necessarily know what we're going to do because of. Um, technical limitations and whatnot. Yeah. Also, remember how we talked about rewarding explorers? There's a great shot from the bottom of that uh, little waterfall. Yeah, it's pretty cool. What about Skingrad? Um, I believe Skingrad next merge for us. <laughs> oh, I almost forgot. For to work on it. I actually forgot about this already. We have, um, well, we have a saber, which is pretty rare, but we also have this uh, this guy. Totally forgot about him. Oh yes, yeah, I remember. Yeah. And he has a little note. Says the guy who hates notes reading or note writing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Basically. I'm. I'm I'm fine with them if they have the time to write the note. Yeah, he was kind of stuck here. He wasn't getting out. But yeah, he was uh, he was a prospector who came down here for uh, riches, but instead fell to his death. Oh no, he, he didn't He didn't fall to his death. Like, he fell down. You can see part of the rope. Yeah, there's part of the rope. Uh, he tried to swim out, uh, but these slaughterfish can swim on land, and they gnawed off his uh, foot. Not supposed to swim on land, to clarify. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is because of the lack of nav mesh. Uh, Ludus, might be interesting to talk about where why there's an... Oh, maybe not, actually. Because we're... <laughs> All right. Good, good save, good save. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, it's not possible to marry people in the game. Um... I'm just gonna rush through the uh, the rest of this because, you know, it's just a it's just a mine. Um, up ahead, oh. I try to do a bit of uh, what we keep referring to as some visual storytelling. So, uh, this is the part of the mine where they broke into the goblin. Um, what do you call it? The goblin lair. Uh, there's some fireball spells, some bloody rags. You'll see scorched marks on the floor. Uh, it, it's not written anywhere, but the, the story is sort of that they had some mages who are kind of blasting through cave systems like this. Uh, but they accidentally ran into these guys, which, uh, yeah. Kind of got them killed, didn't it? Another thing, you know, we, we keep talking about Easter eggs. I added one, which is not subtle at all, but it's also hard to get to because you have to jump over this and it doesn't look like it goes anywhere. 
I think this might be my favorite Easter egg, <laughs> if it's but, the yeah, one I'm thinking of. <laughs> you, can, you can even properly see it anyway, but there's a little uh, mushroom mushroom house. There you go, here it is. Here's the one I was thinking of. Yeah. Oh, it's the new rock broken in the way, is it? Maybe, but it kind of works out, but yeah. With very, very teeny cabbages. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's it's not like it's a no fun allowed allowed zone in Skoblivion. It it gets very close to it sometimes because you know we we try to not take these things too far. But uh, yeah, even even I got to make a little stupid Easter egg. This is um, no... yeah, go ahead. There's no weapon durability. It's a quick question. Okay, right. cheers. On. No good. Like this, it's a Q and A, so it's good that you're asking yeah. questions. Uh, this is the first uh, sort of like a social area in the in the the govan lair where they're you know they're growing mushrooms, they're eating people together, they're eating rats together, you know the usual. Um, um, just family things. Just family things, yeah. Just just hashtag just goblin things. Um, uh, Kyle on on Twitch you, can, you have a level five hype train, and I think that's something I should make you aware of. Well, wow, fucking we. That's my thing. Fuck you. Oh, sorry, dude. I thought it was Wilburger's thing. My bad. Oh, I know it was yours. You know. <laughs> thank, thank you very much, everyone. Uh, yeah. Also, something I tried to do. Go goblins are not good crafters, but uh, I I tried to make like this sort of makeshift sleeping area. Um, the thing with goblins is they're they're kind of tricky. They're they're ape ape like creatures in terms of intelligence. Um, they do. They communicate verbally. They they have their own language, um, but they're not master builders either. So it's it's kind of difficult to make a a goblin uh, interior sometimes because you are a bit limited in what you can and cannot do. Um, but yeah, that was kind of my way to make it look more like you know it was a goblin location, um, and this this would be the uh, the final room. Um, I'm just gonna go through this quickly. Uh, that's... Are these goblins who use these animations in the final build? Very likely. They are rigged to the Falmer skeleton to use Falmer animations. Uh, they fit fairly well. They look very, they're very goblin like anyway. Yeah. But you can add custom rigs to the game, but it's a lot of work to add custom rigs and custom skeletons. So it's something we've chosen to avoid for the most part. Um, I'm not sure if the. the Spider Daedra might be getting a slightly custom rig because of it, just the way it works. Yeah. So really, really quickly, this is the uh, the, the boss room. the The goblin in here is uh, well, the boss. Uh, he'll be he'll he'll be wearing armor and he'll look a lot cooler in the end. Uh, but as you can see, he has a he has a sort of like an improvised throne out of bones, chairs, uh, tables, what have you, um, to try and you know, make him look a bit more important. Uh, this is his little uh, goblin treasure trove. Has some cool stuff in there for you to find. Um, and something that a lot of people asked me while I was making this on Twitch, like when I was streaming, uh, is if there was a way to backtrack, which was a really cool feature of Skyrim. Um, so in Oblivion, if you went through a dungeon and you came at the end, you had to go all the way back to the beginning, um, through the same way you came in. And something that Skyrim added was ways for you to sort of teleport back to the start. Or closer to the start, anyway, which is what I did here as well. So they have basically a, a sort of like a treasure slash garbage chute. So anything that the goblins loot uh, on the surface, they just throw down here. Uh, you know, you have silverware, torches, shovels, uh, beer, bones... Anything they they might see as valuable, they'll just throw down here, and they you know they can sort it out and give the the shiny stuff to the uh, the golem boss. But if you go down into this place, um, you'll uh, you'll teleport to uh, another part of the dungeon that we've already been to, and yeah, it's kind of a really really cool concept from from Skyrim that I just I can I can really appreciate. Um, yeah, it brings you to this top part. You can get up here. You can only get down from it. Because there is a there is a ladder, but it's fallen down, so that kind of keeps you from, you know, sort of cheesing your way back. Um, I noticed there's a bit of clipping here that I need to fix, though. Um, Someone asked if that's a bound sword. That is gold brand. It has a new custom effect. 
that's uh that kind of ends the the presentation from my end anyway about interior levels um I want to maybe actually very quickly stop by the uh, the slash and smash shop, so that way we have shown kind of like a um, what do you call it? like a civilian area and um, dungeon. There'll, be no, blinds. there'll be no acrobatics. No. The skills, and I've seen a few people ask about skills. Actually, skills will be oh, what's that? Um, very much Skyrim's because we're not able to add more skills to the game. Skyrim has a hard limit on the number of skills, so. Flash and Smash, was it in this place or left? Next to the right, I think. I thought so too. It's next to Jensen's, I thought. No, it's not. Well, the I other was... side, the other side to Jensen's, yeah. I think it's the first shot. Yeah, um... Side. Might be good to talk really quickly about the the weapon as well. The weapon is a unique model. Uh, it was modeled to look epic, and it does. Uh, but someone who recently joined the team, uh, who goes online by the name of Air of Septim, made a really cool enchanted effect, um, which is why it looks like it's on fire. And if you actually draw it out, you know, if if it's if it's on your person, you see it in the sheath and it looks normal. But when you take it out spawns this fire in and you can also do really cool oh crap and have to drop it oh f son of a bitch the crash yeah um. all right <clears throat> okay bear the with me tower wasn't loading properly because the LOD had been um altered yeah my bad So we Windows only, I use Linux. Um, we haven't, the installer currently isn't in a working state. Um, we're in a dev kind of environment at the moment, but the, the full install will be worked on later on once we know what we fully need from it. So it might work on Linux, I have no idea. Yeah. I was asked regarding VR. I, I don't believe there's any reason why this shouldn't work as any other mod with VR. Unless anyone else would want to chip in on that. Um, there may be something just to change. We don't, we're not really sure, I think. But as far as I know, um, Skyrim VR is just Skyrim SS, Skyrim SE with VR added on. So I think it takes SE mods and everything's in an SE format, I think. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Slash and smash. Oops. I told you it was the right side. Totally. The other right, though, than you said. Did you? <laughs> All right, good start. Did you show the uh, the lock picking menu? A new lock pick. Interface? Uh, for like a split second. Yeah. Oh yeah. So what I, what I did is I I hung up some weapons on the unicorn mounted unicorn head, but uh, since the head has changed, they fell down because they no longer fit. Um, Minotaur. What did I say? Unicorn. Oh. What sick bastard would mount a unicorn? <laughs> yeah, my bad. Same with this one. Like, it was using the old uh, ported head. So I need to redo that. Wait, this is kind of cool to show off, like, how you can add a lot more detail to your interiors and to your levels. Make it feel a lot more unique. Um, yeah, I really, I really, I like this stupid thing. So that when the shop closes, they can uh, put that down. As you can see, it's been reinforced a lot so that, you know, thieves cannot really get past the lock easily. I say easily because you can definitely get past it. But, uh, yeah, that was something I really quickly wanted to show off anyway. Um, let's go to uh, to Bruma quickly, shall we? Maybe not into Bruma. Yeah, okay, not into Bruma, but the, uh, yeah. the outside anyway, yeah. Yeah. This is this is currently for Skyrim's Bath Edition, Sean. Oh, and then we can uh, check out the Oblivion Gates. Um, for everyone watching on both Twitch and YouTube, I'm just going to be repeating myself a lot. I feel like during the stream, but um, if you're interested in this Oblivion project, 
Uh, if you think that what we do is cool, uh, you can follow us on social media. Uh, on you know, just look up Skyblivion on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Reddit. Uh, we have a Discord server. Everything is linked in the in the video, by the way, in the video description, um, in the stream description, I should say. So you can give us a follow there. Also, if you are a 3D artist, if you have experience with modding Skyrim. We're always looking for more people to help us out. Simply put, the more people help out, the faster it'll get done. Quick math. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate the support. Um, if you are watching on YouTube, maybe you can also like the stream. It makes it easier for people to find the video afterwards. Um, so yeah, I really, really appreciate that. And thank you guys for all the great questions, for all the support. The, uh, yeah, the support on the new development diary was... Humbling, to say the least, it was uh, really fantastic to see that so many people are uh, are rooting for us and, and cheering us on. Um, so, yeah, thank you all very, very much and allow me to shut up and get that Aurora showing up. This time of day, localized entirely on the border to Skyrim. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the Aurora Borealis is, is something that's unique to Skyrim, um, and that's why you can only see it on the Skyrim side of the map. Um, it's a unique, it's a unique weather. It only happens in the uh, the Bruma area, and you can only see the Aurora kind of hanging over Skyrim. You can just see it across the mountaintops, which I think was a very very cool detail to add. Um, and it's probably a very nice contrast to where we are going to be going after we, uh, we've enjoyed the, uh, Aurora Borealis. Really difficult word for me as a non-native speaker. It's Latin, right? Of Latin. Uh, it's <laughs> non-native non speaker Latin of the Raven speaker, Empire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I believe you should show off the uh, shadow mirror. Oh, yes. Help shadow mirror. Me. Can you run over to the um, the graveyard side so mirror as well? Where the gate spawns. We'll, uh, we'll showcase Shadowmere properly when it's uh, light out. Beautiful boy. Well, that's dark, isn't it? It is. I think that might need to be uh, tweaked just a little bit. No, that's fine. Yeah, I, I, have a, I have a cool voice as well, chat. All right. <laughs> it's not called a deep, though, Kyle. So. I just want some love, too, you know? <laughs> yes, this is the graveyard where the gate was spawned in. Yeah. Um, Breville never, Bruma never had a, a graveyard before. Obviously, a city's going to have dead people, right? People die. So there's this graveyard is where the gate spawns and lots of the graves and everything gets kind of upturned once the gate spawns in. Which is kind of a nice yeah. um, change players will notice. And uh, Shadowmere looks like a zombie horse. Beautiful. I love it. Maybe something to look into later is uh, potentially give him a different saddle, actually. But, yeah, uh, that's um, nice. Black saddle or something. Look at the chest area, you can see the ribs. I'll speak to it like Scarab Oblivion. Yeah, there'll be the. So when. So the, the Persuade mini game from Oblivion is not coming back. Oh, yeah. But right. we'll have opportunities to persuade, bribe, and intimidate, like in Skyrim. 
And there's a lot more of them than Skyrim had. Skyrim didn't have many, from, as well, in the way. It's a feature they didn't really use in the game. Um, we have quite a lot from what I've seen so far. Like it. Where in Wales am I from? Um, just said Cardiff. Can, um, can D maybe share the uh, COC commands for the Oblivion Realm? Then we're gonna do like the little bit. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, so this is kind of the uh what what's the coordinates because I can't read those. Uh, fifteen fifteen. This is um a bit of a big reveal. Uh since we you know we have been working on uh Oblivion Realms, but we've never shown any of them in more or less their final Master, form. Right? Yeah. Um quick uh disclaimer that the a lot of the architecture the the daedra architecture is not finished yet um but the focus here is the landscaping uh the level design the way the the oblivion realm looks and feels um we're going to be doing a, a proper showcase of this in the future um but for now you know to to kind of thank all of you for your fantastic support uh, for all your your kind messages and uh, yeah, for just being stand up peeps, um, this is kind of our our way to say thank you and our little uh, little present to you guys. So yeah, again, thank you very much for just being excellent, and uh, I hope you will enjoy this. Actually, this is also the first time I'm seeing this, so don't mind if I'm gonna geek out with you guys. <laughs> and I misspelled. Oh, it's an oblivion gate. No, it's an oblivion. <sighs> and there's a space after the. Uh... Okay, guess that works without it. If it works, it works. <laughs> <laughs> I hope there's no missing meshes. <laughs> Dude. We start from the actual gate and run through the normal route. Yeah, the, Do I have the 15, 15 coordinates. Uh, well, you can get you can get you can get across there without, uh, you know. Uh, I have, I've got modes. For God's sakes, is that that's no fun that way. I didn't oh, design I'm the level for I'm, I'm God sorry. Mode. Scrubs. Why not? <laughs> uh, you, you can get. Uh, fine, fine. We'll do it your way. I'll, we'll do it the proper way. I'll just I'll, just, I'll swim back through the lava. <laughs> we, we've been having discussions on the dev server about the uh, the correct way to walk through lava, and I think the final decision was you don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Where's a crack in the wall? There's a crack in the wall. Oh, now I get why you wanted us to uh, take this route. Hello, puppy. Actually, part of my favorite. Hope we do something real disgusting with those flesh pods. I would love to see like a, like a face in it, like some rib cage or something, and a few varieties and stuff. I'm gonna quickly uh, change armor set because I feel like the elven armor is like very anti oblivion because <clears throat> it's so elegant and <laughs> light. Nice contrast, I think. Am I gonna give you a tour? Okay, sure. These are these are the blood pits. Um it's pure it's only children's blood. Um that's the if it's adult blood you, you don't get the bubbles right, you know. <laughs> Oh my god. So dark. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's no kids in Sierra. Oh, that makes sense. Eh? Oh my god. Didn't you talk about how this could be a cave entrance? I, I, I agree with you, actually. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, wow. You really did an amazing job. On this. I mean, what am I saying? We only we only saw like one corner. <laughs> Hello. Hmm. 
It's Skyrim the Oblivion engine. I agree. Who's gonna start it then? Oh, dude, that is gnarly. I like that. Like a there's a, a bloody Bruma helmet on on this thing with like a burning guy. Oh right, right. this is this is the Bruma gate. Holy shit! Yeah. I didn't even realize that. Which way should we go? Should we go over the bridge or jump down this part? It looks like you want me to jump down here. I mean, then... you can try to go over the bridge if you want. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna say it looks like you're trying to. Uh, to get me to jump down. Yeah. Right. I'll. Uh, I'll go down there. It's uh, very much broken. So. <laughs> What's up, Shadow? I just saw your message. Oh, Clan Fear. Um, should I? Sp I, uh, I should probably spawn one in because we're too low level for Clan Clan Fears to spawn. Or did you did you put in a Clan Fear or two, D? Uh, no. Um, I think it just has the current the. Uh, yeah, it's just bonds. leveled. Yeah, I'm, I'm level one, so there's not going to be any uh, Clan Fears. Level is probably the best way to go, just make sure things are balanced, right? Especially in a realm. Yeah. Uh, help clan here. Can you show Cloudrunner Temple in the diamond? Cloudrunner Temple is still currently um, the old models. Um, I want to work on the actual location to make it a bit more epic as well, I think. A comma, I did. These uh, these console command strings are so much fun. Ah. I uh, I have disabled the combat by the way, which is why everyone is just staring around. Also, there's no nav mesh, so they would wouldn't be able to really attack us properly anyway. But uh, yeah, these have been made by Shadow and Wolf, I think. Wolf that the high poly and shadow made it fucking awesome. Really like the the kind of like the slime the saliva in their mouths as well. Yeah. Such a good detail. Yeah, these guys are foaming to uh, to rip us apart. Could you guys want to join Super Smash Brothers? Um, Martin. Martin Septim. Hundred percent. Sean or, or just Sean Bean. Yeah. What's the difference? It's just the, the act of Sean Bean. Oh. Something uh, that's maybe good to note is that we plan on having a unique soundtrack play in the Oblivion Realm, so they, they sound uh kind of like you're a lot more in a rush, because right now it it's kind of like the the, the sound effects are kind of got like calm almost where ideally we want you to feel like you need to like rush through this place and you need to get out as fast as possible it's i think what uh what we want you to uh to feel like an experience oh look at that flying i love the idea of some sort of choir i don't know why yeah so they didn't do eternal this or something like that with some choirs metal choir yeah that sounds awesome also we can't do quite straight metal right but maybe we can try and grab some of that energy at least. You know what I just realized? I missed the um, the named Oblivion Guard that, you're, that you can save. Will he be here now? Uh, I think he's close to the bridge, usually. He might not be enabled though until... I don't think, I've never... In fact, I don't think I've ever seen him <laughs> developing this level. <laughs> oh. There's no EMB, no. Where should we go, Shadow? Uh, Add screams too, that could be pretty cool. Some like faint stuff in the music. 
you are Welcome also Zoom, absolutely, the sun's based. absolutely free to play the Doom soundtrack from your own computer <laughs> while you go through the <laughs> Yeah. So I might make a mod, who knows? Should be the first person to download that. Or the Hades soundtrack, which may be, uh, may be more fitting. I'd be the first person to make oh, that one. Nice. <laughs> That's the this is the remade decal, right? From uh, Days of Re, I think. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, nice. Oh, that's like I, that. I put that there just to kind of entice the player for like back way around, or just as an excuse to go around this way. Well, it worked. Got me looking. And they call him. The Doom Slayer. Oh yeah, cool. You get uh, to the other side, basically, of the bridge. That's really nice. Really cool. My question for you, though, D, is there a an Anakin Easter egg in here? Because I'm pretty sure that was the Oblivion Gate, wasn't it? No, it's the Kavach Gate. Then. Oh, it's the yeah. Kavach one. Oh yeah, that's the first one. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, that's that's why I'm mistaken. Because th there's no there's no guy in the uh, Bruma Gate. It's the Kavach Gate that's uh, oh. that you're you're saving the guards. My bad. I, I have my gates mixed up. What a casual. What a fake nerd. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Crack the uh, Minecraft camera picture. Big dev inside joke, but you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No one else gets it. I think it's better that way. Yeah, this, this, yeah. Is, this is really fantastic. I think we've, we've just gone around. This looks incredible. D, really, really fantastic job on this. Thank you. I think there's like a few like another little island, I think. Um, the unique armor you... vendors, armor weapon vendors have unique armor models. So the yeah, each armor vendor had a unique armor or weapon they sold, didn't they? If you take a left past the the corpse uh, sticking out of the vent and go further down, it leads you. All right. Each uh, all those some of those uh, armors and weapons that are sold by the vendors will now have unique models. I don't think all of them will have in the end. I think there's more important ones that will have uniques. Yeah. Some of them will. I think when it comes to making unique models, they're they're fun to do, but they're also you know they cost a, a decent chunk of time. So we're we're, mm -hmm. we're we're trying to to you know make make meshes unique where it makes sense and where it's just the most important. Prioritize, um, right? Yeah, exactly. And we we have some you know for the lack of a better word, boring assets to work on as well. Um, so we're we're trying to behave and not overdo it, but at the same time, you know. 3D artists are people too, and they sometimes need to work on something fun, something they enjoy. So, yep. you know, a, a cool, unique weapon is, uh, is a good way to do that. Hello. Will there be shouts? There will not be shouts, no. You are not the Dragonborn. No. Oh. The Dragonborn, you are not. Alright, um, I think, I, what do you guys think? Should we go anywhere else after this? Or is this, uh... Is there anything people want to see? Impressions are still flooding in. Yeah, but I mean, I I, I, I I can't keep going all night either, because... Uh, yes. It's been, holy shit, dude, we've been live for three and a half hours, and I haven't had dinner. Yeah, I'm going to make sure quite a nice, uh, maybe closing question. Uh, what is it about Oblivion that makes you guys love this game so much? Ooh, the difficult one, really. I think it's it, it, probably the one. No, you, you, you made noise first, so you win this round, friend. <laughs> yeah, it was probably it's probably the game that made me fall in love with gaming. Um, I ever had. An Xbox 360 back then. I played every now and again, but when I got Oblivion, it was the game I really played. And kind of my first RPG and first proper in depth gaming experience. I think that was when we made fall in love with it. Obviously, introduced me to the Elder Scrolls series as well and everything. Yeah, I'm going to try and copy paste your answer for the most part. Like, it was kind of the, the, the RPG that got me into Elder Scrolls, got me into video games in general. Um, which makes it really special. I didn't even have we, we didn't have consoles at home, so I would play it at a at a friend's house and a cousin, 
who owned it. Um, which made me actually you know, work pretty hard <laughs> to get to get my hands on the game and actually play it. Because I had to go places. Um, but it it's also, and this is going to sound super cheesy, but this is the game that got me to where we are today and um you know through skeblivion we've we've had you know we've made some great friends we've had uh some really cool experiences i've traveled to america to to meet up with some people uh who really like the project i've been to to gamescom to hang out with like uh people of the bethesda community um and i mean we've we've kind of gotten together and we've worked on this absolute massive undertaking uh and i think that, that is it's not so much what, what made oblivion great but for me but it, it's what what it, what is continuing to make this game kind of special to me is is you know the whole experience leading to where we are now is uh yeah has been pretty amazing i think one definitely for me is um just how how whenever I first played Oblivion, how well it tied into like my love of Lord of the Rings. Yes, because it's it's like this this it's like a similar contrast. Um, like the world space Cyrodiil is so beautiful and lush, it kind of reminds you of the Shire. But you as the player end up traveling to some horrible looking places. You know, a lot look a lot like Mordor. You know, and I I think uh, as as good as like the official movie games of Lord of the Rings were, I think there were so many people that still wanted like a big open world RPG for Lord of the Rings and this game really filled that that void. But yeah. you know, it did it it did it by um you know starting on its own with its own lore and everything. It's the coding lead there hasn't been really anything for me to answer so far, but I can answer this. <laughs> uh when I was I just gotten home from summer our first year at college and i'd never played anything elder scrolls before i didn't know what i didn't know it was the fourth game in a series someone just told me get oblivion it's great and i guess i rented it from a, a local like tape and dvd place and i'd never played anything like it i was just amazed by you you're you're standing there you can see so far away and you can generally walk to whatever you see and go explore it the closest thing I'd played to that was like Zelda, and I loved Ocarina of Time, but there's not really a great degree of freedom to walk everywhere, obviously, um, except for maybe in the newer games, but like Ocarina of Time, you, it, it might feel big to a 10 year old, but when you're in college, it just doesn't feel that big. So anyway, Oblivion the, and the, the level of exploration, all the stuff you could see and um, the, the, the weather, the environments, all the people you could talk to, um, I, I had never seen anything like that. And, and I just, I played it like crazy. I'd be up late playing it, and the the, the loading times were terrible. And I would, I would be on the loading screen thinking, "I gotta go to bed. I gotta go to bed," and then finally load, and I'd be back into it, um, loving every minute of it. Uh, it was um, it was a really groundbreaking game for me. I, I loved it. A pretty good answer. Yeah, thank you. Tarik, Shadow. Uh, okay, I uh, asked the question, so I think that's <laughs> uh, I think that's fair. Um, it's just the I think the feeling of slightly becoming addicted to it <laughs> is uh, definitely there. Um, so something you'd just play for an entire weekend and then need to go back to school. I think lots of people have got a really good memory of um, sort of going over to a friend's house and finding all these secrets and this uh, sort of before we were searching stuff off on the internet as well, um, and just, just having that freedom. And I. I, I personally loved um, putting on all the different, um, putting all the different armors and all the weapons you can have, and thinking that's so cool. And it's it felt so in depth and um, really feeling drawn into that world. It was, it was just uh, I, I found it great, and it's uh, definitely stuck with me as the uh, the template for games that I like to play going forwards. Stop talking, enough. <laughs> <laughs> and we just killed Ember. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to end the stream with some really cool gear. So, you know, what we're wearing right now is the elven armor, but uh, I'll be changing into the unique Umbra armor and wielding the unique Umbra sword after we've shown off this one one more time. 
Um, maybe there's. Uh, maybe you could show a bit of Bravilla. For half the stunt. Yeah, sure. Fuck, that sword is cool. Um. Just, just make sure. But uh, Shadow, you, uh, you also want to answer the question, or will you pass? I think that's a pass. God damn it! Wrong shoes. Want to be matching? Uh. Yeah, really quickly. This is the uh, the unique armor for Umbra. Uh, which is a uh, an NPC that you have to kill in order to get well the sword Umbra, which is also unique. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna quickly run through Leowin, which you have seen in the latest developer update. Uh, I'm just gonna repeat myself, probably the last time today. Uh, if you haven't yet watched the developer diary, go watch it on YouTube. It's the latest video we have uploaded. Um, it's the third one in a series, so maybe watch one and two as well if you have the time um if you want to help out the project um you know we're always looking for more volunteers so if you're a 3d artist if you have experience with the creation kit uh if you are a nav measure if you're a quest implementer we would love to have you uh, you can drop an application on our website www.scoblivion.com um, if you just want to keep up to date with the project we have social media uh just look up um Scablivian on facebook twitter instagram reddit uh, and we have a Discord server as well. Everything is linked in the description of the uh, of the stream. And um, yeah, lastly, if you're if you are watching this on YouTube, something that does really help is just liking the stream. Um, it helps people find the video. Uh, it helps with you know getting the algorithm to uh, to to see us, um, which might in turn reach that one guy you know who's gonna do a shit ton of work and make sure that the project comes out sooner. Who knows? It could happen. I can see it happen. Um, I, I sent you the uh, puddles, by the way, if you want to... Uh, do do any of the mods know how to spam the uh, community server? I sent you a link for it? I don't know how to paste that properly, so <laughs> I'm going to ask someone else. I'll, 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 I'll do it in Discord and YouTube and... So we, we do show a lot of um, so a lot of the armors off, Kyle. Um, we have done quite a lot of clothing. I'm not sure if they oh, get yes. limelight because they uh, are I, um, not quite as shiny and flashy. Actually, I did add them. I, I completely forgot. We had the the robes. I did show off. Uh, I tried to pick up all the new clothes. Uh, do you have the dresses? Someone did a very good job at implementing this. There we go. Um, well, I mean, I, I, could, uh, I could turn myself into a woman, and then it'll be a dress. <laughs> to search. Blue and green with the Akmasand. Oh, it's a little uh, floaty hand thing going Ch on. What what should I Google or uh, search? Uh, blue and green. Then Sorry, I was, I, was, I was talking to my family earlier about how the word Google became generic, and that was the most generic yeah. use of Google I think I've heard in a while. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, uh, green and blue. Blue and green, but with the um, the and symbol. You have to do uh, speech marks around the thing as well. You do speech marks. Get into that. That was a speech mark. It's like the the quotation mark, boys. Yeah. The uh, dash dash, boys. Uh. I think quite the other one. I think it's shift and oh my god, I don't want to see what keyboard have you got? You're American or UK? American probably. Shift two, try that. I think that's a Yeah, there we go. Oh. You get anything though. You need to do a space bar at the end. There we go. Player dots. Add item. And if, if if people don't have experience in three D modeling or um any or doing any modding, then there there are communities. So if you are really passionate and really willing to put in the work, it's absolutely attainable. 
if, if it's something you want to just try out, see if it's for you. There, there are communities. We're happy to point you in the right direction. And if you get really good, we'd be happy to welcome you aboard. Lutz, I feel like it's not the right one. We'll change turn to a female. Show oh. the dress. I want to take the armor off and stuff as well. Don't know. Oh, yeah, that's nice. Not so nice with the helmet and the shield. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's a nice little uh, pouch as well on it. Looks good. All right, then uh, it's to Breville next, I guess. For the... I sent you the, the puddles are missing from the current build, I forgot. Don't want to restart the game. You wouldn't. Come on, show them in the full, in the full glory. Uh, okay, fine. A 3D model up my experience. Product design, not games. I'm going to try. Um, you don't necessarily need game knowledge to do a lot of the work we do. Um, stuff like clutter and all the rest. Um, that all the gameplay stuff, all the web well, implementation is handled by an implementation department. So you don't necessarily need to know how to put them into the game. So, uh, so someone's asked about um, maybe not being so good an artist. Um, so I've actually found that I'm terrible. I'm awful drawing. I'm dyslexic. My handwriting is absolutely terrible. But I really enjoy 3D modeling. And um, just that's how my brain works. And I think lots of people might find out the same thing. You might not have artistic skill in one area, but your brain might be more suitable to um, that more, uh, I don't want to say rigid structure, but other other areas. So absolutely uh, try it out, download, um, I'm going to say Blender again. Uh, <laughs> download Blender, there's tutorials. It's really fun. Um, find out what you enjoy doing. And there's such a wide spectrum that goes into making mods like this. I'm the same way. I, I can't draw 2D to save my life. My like if I like draw just a doodle for a level layout, um, it it just doesn't look. It doesn't help me. So it doesn't because <laughs> the picture's so bad. All right, I guess we're showing off two uh, exclusive things today. Uh, Breville, which is a work in progress, and the Oblivion Gates. I hope you guys realize that no one's going to watch the next Dev Diary this way. <laughs> this, uh, this Breville is very much half done. But oh, please be, please be kind on me. So much work gets done in between. Um, it's kind like, of, it's, 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 making of Dev Diaries. It's, it's, it's kind of stupid. stupid. Yeah, we, we were all watching the Dev Diary together, going, oh, that's been made now and this is this is so much improved and um do you have any recommendations of people learning 3d um or there's... Shadow, you don't... uh for, for me for me personally uh lots and lots of youtube videos um i think um blender guru's donut tutorial is a bit of a cliche but it's a, it's a really good place to start so re really um what what personally what i did was that i looked at things on my desk and then i tried to make a model of that and then i'm quite into doing procedural texturing in blender so making everything absolutely from scratch within the software uh that might not be for everyone um but there's there's lots of free software, and if you've got a um pretty much, even if you've got a potato computer, um, you can find a software that'll work for you. I need some new loading screen art. Uh, we do have new loading screens. They're like a hybrid of two D and three D. It's a like a two D artwork which is movable. So you can move it around, and different layers of the image will move at different rates. 
So it kind of looks like a parallax effect. It's really cool. Just trying to quickly find an interior I did because we were talking about visual storytelling. Uh, this this is the one. Um, so this is a an interior that belongs to a Doge. Is that how you pronounce it? Like the the Thieves Guild um, people. Oh. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. I can't remember. I thought it was a Doge. Might be some, like something like that. Um. Anyway, she's she's a part of the the Thieves Guild. Um. Dojin, a Dojin, yes, sorry, a Dojin. Um, a Dojin for the Thieves Guild. So the, the interior itself doesn't look that special, it looks a bit messy. Uh, but something I did add was, for instance, like there's a little uh, hidden stash, you know, with, with stolen merchandise that you might be able to find if you don't walk past this so quickly. Um, and there's some, some stolen stuff up there as well, some really rare, th rare things that she's hidden behind some... Uh, some box and stuff and that's that's the way that you you know you, you try to, to to tell a story and you try to make the the house fit the the person that lives there um you know think keep keep their occupation in mind in this case you know being a thieving uh cat um but it's it's, it's a great way to try and tell a story and, and i mean most people are going to find it i think in this case this one isn't even that well hidden but i've, I've done a few of these thieves guilds Interiors where I tried to hide, you know, stolen stuff like that, and it's a really great way to try and uh, tell tell that story without, you know, putting anything into writing. Let people kind of figure things out, find it for themselves. Yeah, maybe uh, maybe Luigi can talk a bit about um, about the city rework so far, what your plans are, where you're gonna go next. Yeah. Also, yeah, sure um, right can maybe while Ludus is talking, at least on Twitch, someone do exclamation point SO the Ludus because he's working, uh, or you, you probably will be working on this on stream, right? At some point again. Yeah, I think so. So uh, basically, working for a lot of the concept art we have, which shows Brazil in a much more rundown state than the original was. The original was kind of told it was poor and not as poor as it made out. So now we have these rundown roads. The main road is kind of um, it's a bit more pristine with lots of walkways, but the side roads are much more like just kind of puddly mess, less um, walkways and stuff. Um, I had some great concept art drawn up by Eric, one of our concept artists. Uh, we've very much stayed inside the same kind of layout. It's not had a drastic kind of rework that Leowin had. Um, uh, yeah, and just kind of general, overall, kind of improving the general quality and the feel of the city to be a much more rundown place. Also trying to incorporate the water. There's like a little new waterfront, small district area. Go down to that and Kyle as well, maybe. Not much of it's done so far, but it's getting there. And again, that's that's also why it's interesting to do this live with you today. Uh, and again, it's because the the support on on the latest developer diary was really incredible that we felt like this would be a really cool way for us to kind of say thank you to you guys for being so just great um and yeah this is kind of like the behind the scenes look this is what it looks like when it's in the works you know there's you, you can see the ground textures are all messed up uh there's stuff floating uh it's not connecting properly but uh in the end it's going to look similar to Lewin. very nicely polished I want to say beautiful, but Breville is not really a beautiful city. Um, no, it's well, it's 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 beautiful in its own way. It's it's um, lived in. Li yeah, lived in. <laughs> if you said the night, it looks quite nice at night as well on its main street. I know we'll do that. You haven't shown much night gameplay off either. I love the way the city walls look with like the lights in them and stuff. It looks pretty nice. Oh, yeah, it does look cool. I reckon when we release Kyle, you're gonna have to. It's gonna be tough for you getting over your RCC addiction. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna have to play the game. <laughs> and when I'm watching people play it or stream it, dude, no, 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 it's too dark. Jeez. It's not that perfect one weather. Yeah, for Kyle hunts all the time. I'm I'm just thinking from a from a presentation perspective. Okay, people need to look at this through the best possible lens. 
That's all. But yeah, I'm really excited to see what uh, what the the actual you know final product's gonna look like for reveal. It's it's really shaping up very very nicely so far. Hopefully we can do a full breakdown for the next dev diary like we did with Leo and yeah yeah that would be great. And yeah that that part is untouched basically. I also really like the um, the 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 church the chapel the cathedral sorry third times the charm. Um, because it has the, uh, the little outhouse, not outhouse, the... The, the, the groundskeeper. The, yeah, the grave tend guy person. Yeah. Yeah. Groundskeeper, yeah, that's the word. Really cool. Like, it's, it's, it's details like that that really make this game stand out, and, you know, the, the level design of this is just so fucking good. Um. Fantastic in this lighting. Yeah, it is. I, 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 I love the silhouette. Light. Just then, it was... Absolutely on point. Yeah. I think Provil looks best at night. Really Not does, yeah. Look best at night. I think Provil really shines at night, though. Yeah. Yeah, you can always imagine like thieves and like assassins sneaking sort around. Of sneaking. Yeah. Yeah. Climb across the rooftops. Um. The seagulls here as well. Yes, I saw those. Yeah. Not sure that's how seals fly. Although I've seen them do that in the wind, so yeah, it's immersive. Fits perfectly. Yeah, they float. Yeah, they kind of like ride the fly in. wind. Yeah. I was going to say ride the wave, but ride the wind. We've had a question on performance. I uh, just want to say we are keeping performance in mind in everything we do. Yeah, of course. And we are um, uh, make, making sure textures aren't too big. So if something... Um, Say there's a, a clutter asset, we're making sure that it doesn't have a 4K texture. Uh, things that are important to quests, we're going to try and make um, high detail. We're, we're going to focus detail on where it needs to be and not where it doesn't need to be. So tops of trees, not so important. So that, that kind of thing. Like, uh, ignore me. Yeah, I was wondering what you were doing up here. <laughs> Just like, you're showing off detail, high detail in an area people aren't going to go to, in absolutely the opposite of the point I just made. <laughs> There's no detail up here. What are you talking about? I think uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna end the stream at the uh, the vineyard. Okay. Such a peaceful, serene location. It's perfect. Can we get that sunset though? That's all you want to get. Oh, yeah. Sunset's yeah, yeah. really nice over the place. And some final questions, maybe, while. Uh, well, also, the collision, this is a bit icky. Yeah. You might want to come back to this place. Yeah, yeah. I think there's the, we probably want to remove the collision from the IV entirely because IV. Oh, yeah. Why doesn't even have it? Right? I didn't know it yeah. had a uh, collision. Yeah. Get your final questions in now, guys. Will the DLC probably even be reworked for Scabble It will. Yeah, we will rework on the. The, um, the DLC after the main release. There, that's what you want. Yeah, that's nice. Really risky to do this toggle free camera, but uh, like the last part of the stream. Um, yeah, get get your last questions in now. I, I think we can do this for like another five minutes or so, but I, I really have to jump off, and unfortunately I'm the guy yeah, food as well. streaming this tomorrow at work. Well, let's be on Steam. Um, there's no plans at the moment. Maybe in the future, we, we're not sure. If you alter the Skyrim engine in any way, um, at engine level, I don't really think so. Wes, maybe? We stay motivated. We we Ooh. listen to. Uh... Sorry, I cut, I cut off a question there. <laughs> uh, sorry, do you want to finish yours? I'm sorry. I I didn't. I couldn't understand. What was the question, please? Um, someone asked if we've altered the game engine at any level. Uh, yes. Uh, as in, we are supplying some custom DLLs to the engine, similar to. They're, they're basically. Uh, SKSE plugins. Um, 
So I don't think that we're alone in doing this kind of thing, but it's not just script text files. We actually are supplying our own compiled C++ to the engine so it could do some extra things that we needed to do. Yeah, I don't okay. get that, but that's why I'm not a, you know, coding <laughs> coding lead. So yeah, I hope that answers the question. Uh, how do we stay motivated? Uh, so I'll, I'll say we're a, we're a community and we listen to terrible, terrible music from the 80s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we hang out a lot together, you know. We, we, I know we're, we're, we're working on this game, um, but... You know, it, it's very much just, you know, like a group of friends hanging out these days. And, you know, when you're just hanging out with friends together, you know, do you really need that much to be motivated? I don't not For me, not not that much, really. Um, so, I, yeah, I just I just really enjoy the time we have uh, and the time we're spending together. Um, and the rest kind of comes naturally. Yeah, I think uh, one of the biggest things that kind of inspires this team is each other like someone someone comes someone brings out like a screenshot of their new armor and everyone fawns over it and it's, that that excites the quest guys because that's the armor that the quest guy is currently working on that it's associated with you know the the landscaping people get inspired because you know they're the one that or either the interior department people or the landscaping people get inspired because they're the ones that get to hide it and put it somewhere that is worthy of the armor yeah you know it's, there's always it's it's like the the talent is infectious on this team like and, uh, 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 so, sorry just just progress from that uh we uh just as you guys all watch the dev diary as um mm -hmm. but just we all got together and we all watched the dev yeah, diary yeah, as well yeah and um we were all just so proud and so happy with the work each other had done and um yeah it's a really great feeling for us and definitely real oomph and we were, we were buzzing after that it was great yeah i mean there was uh to, to give you an idea like we we don't have a small or we don't have a big development team you know the, the amount of active developers um you have to keep that in mind you know, we're, we're all volunteers so we, we try to do what we can when we can but there's a you know sometimes people come in they do you know one asset or one claim and then they kind of drop out again because you know they have a job they have a family they have their own lives to deal with and that's fine but uh for the developer diary we got together all of us or you know everyone who could make it um old developers new developers people who have since like left the project as in they're not working anymore but they're still on the server uh and there was 49 people in the end watching developer diary which is a huge part of the team and we've never had that many people just you know hanging out like that together so you know as cool as it is for you guys to see the developer diary and to see the prog progress um it's it's double that for us ourselves because you know if, if you're new on the team you might see one of your first interiors uh being showcased or one of your first 3d assets being part of that video um and that's just you know a really really cool thing and it's really fantastic we can sort of share that uh, experience together like that so you know the motivation kind of cuts both ways I guess if I hit some real quick ones um, so spell crafting will be a thing that definitely that is coming um, leveling is currently like Skyrim's there may be some changes to that in the future say uh, lock picking is currently Skyrim's and yeah also young scrolls hey dude Hey, young hey, scrolls! Young scrolls. <laughs> <laughs> the man, the myth, the legend. Um, all right, yeah, I, I hate to be that guy, but uh, I think we might have to uh, um, we might have to end it there then. Um, so yeah, thank you all so much for your support. I'm gonna say this one last time, but if you're on YouTube, uh, liking the stream really helps. Um, it it makes it easier for people to find find the video, which you know potentially can mean that a new volunteer finds the video and, and you know helps out with the project which means it can get released quicker so if you're watching on youtube please like and if you haven't yet subscribed because new developer diaries are coming uh and you know at some point a release trail as well um if you want to follow this Oblivion project we are on twitter facebook instagram reddit we have a discord server all the links are in the description uh, of the stream uh what else we're 
we're still a work in progress. We're still developing the game. So if you are a 3D artist, if you're a texture artist, if you have experience with modding Skyrim, you know, you have experience with the creation kit, you can do nav mesh, you can do implementation, you can uh, make a quest, you can uh, do some level design. We would love to have you. Uh, we're, we're always looking for more people and, you know, the more people help out, the faster the project gets done. It's it's that simple. Um, and yeah, having that said, thank you so much for the support on the developer diaries. Uh, it's been really unreal seeing how, how many people are tuning into them and, you know, the, the support, the kind words, words of encouragement, the feedback as well, um, where we do, you know, read the comments. So thank you for being uh, fantastic. Um, and yeah, maybe maybe some of you guys want to add some some closing words as well or say something, I don't know. Say hello I to your mom. Say, Young Scroll said, let me make a bard song. Yes. Yes. Do it. We we, we do I have think... a nice to uh, nice to have list, which will be things which we'd really like in the game, but we're also well in mind that we don't want to have scope creep because if we put everything we wanted in the game, then things, then the game might never get released. So we need to set the line somewhere. So uh, the things like bard songs is definitely something we want to have. Uh, if Young Scrolls is willing, though, I'm sure we could. Uh, absolutely, yeah. We could try. All right, great. Um, in that case, thank you very much for watching. Um, stay tuned. Follow us on social media, and uh, we will see you in the next one. Thank you, everyone. See you Bye, guys. Everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. It had to go wrong, didn't it? Uh, I was just saying thank you guys so much for uh, for all the support. Uh, a game, even a work in progress game, is only as good as the community. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate you guys uh, showing your support like this and, and supporting us while we're working on this fantastic game. Um, great way to make a fool of myself uh, at the last second. So awesome. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys for the supports. It's really appreciated. And I hope you will enjoy, you know, our upcoming updates. And uh, yeah. Ciao. <laughs>